What's your thoughts on government cover-ups or covert societies attempting to control humanity? Do you believe in ancient astronauts, intergalactic communication or extraterrestrial visitations? Ever had an experience with disembodied spirits or the paranormal universe? Are these subjects fact or fiction? Each week, Tony and Eddie explore these unbelievable realities and beyond. Exclusively on Truth Be Told. Welcome back to Truth Be Told, where we believe an experience becomes truth. I'm your host, Tony Sweet, and joining me now in studio is the world-renowned psychic, Eddie Connor. We want to thank you for supporting our sponsors, Conscious Life Expo. You can go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com and check out all the wonderful gifts that they have to offer. And upcoming in 2016 in February, uh, they have a Conscious Life Expo. And get your tickets already in advance. And Eddie? Yes, take your mind on a literary journey by traveling over to AdventurousUnlimitedPress.com to purchase books from our famed experts featured right here on Truth Be Told. Eddie, today we're going to do a special show. It's about mediumship. Yes, and people say, what is mediumship? And uh, I'm going to ask the expert right here to my right. Oh, I know. With Eddie Connor, what is mediumship to you? Mediumship to me is when... And, and we've heard this a lot of times, and that is, we've heard that as humans, we need to raise our vibration higher, more pure, to stay in aligned with what we call our higher selves or our souls, to connect with spirits that are already in a higher frequency. And then we've heard sometimes that the spirits will lower their frequency to acquiesce to us. So the humans are down here, the spirits are up here, and then we meet somewhere in the middle, which I have heard that's where mediumship comes from. And for me, mediumship is when you are tuned in, connected, aligned, and you feel really, really good, peaceful. Your mind feels almost like a blank meditative slate. And then you can start receiving their voices, their images, the pictures, and the spe specifics that they want to share with us. If you can get you out of your way a little bit. That's, for me, what mediumship is. Well, I think today we are in for a special treat and for the people that are listening. And if you're listening to the podcast, it's really not going to do you much good except just learning from what we're going to be talking about. We're going to take some live calls today and Ooh. do some readings. There you go. So let's go ahead and introduce our guest. We have astrologer, intuitive Rachel Lang in the house. Hello. I know. Now, see, now I'm going to be all southern again. Mic, mic <laughs> so let me say it again. Astrologer and intuitive Rachel Lang in the house. Hello. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. And yeah. Rachel is also one of the UBN hosts here with Bliss and Up. Yes, Actually yes. Actually at noon today. Yeah, exactly. Every <laughs> Friday at noon. Uh, and I do some mediumship too. Um, oh. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Look I. That's why she's yeah, here. Yeah, that's how actually that <laughs> uh, mediumship and astrology were were the two the two areas of focus when I started my practice. So, uh, yeah, and actually it's so funny because the minute you start talking about it, it's like all of a sudden I'm in that space and I can I can sort of feel like all the the little spirits kind of coming into the room, making oh, their sad. way uh, in in and you know little animals too, little animal spirits. So no snakes, please. Uh, yeah. No, no snakes. <laughs> <laughs> scared of snakes. Uh, and we also have a international psychic oh. medium in with us today. We, uh, she's an author, public speaker, and now a master teacher for the Elisa Williams School of Mediumship. And her name is Colby Psychic Rebel. <laughs> Yay, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much for being Hello. here, you two ladies. Thank you so much. Well, we're, we're, like I said, we are going to have a, a great time. It's We have two hours to discuss, and I wanted to start off by saying thank you to you both because very talented. I've worked with you both. Uh, uh, with Colby, I got to go and take some classes at Lisa Williams School. You impressed me so much. Oh, thank you. And you're, you're, you are different than a lot of psychics. <laughs> 
yeah. lots of energy a lot yeah. of energy and what was the joke that we were talking about earlier before with rachel about how to be spiritual oh yes that's right <laughs> <laughs> to be spiritual you have to talk in this kind of a voice <laughs> <laughs> for the whole show we're all, we're we're all, all going to do yeah, just like this just very monotone until everybody falls asleep <laughs> and then the, and then I'll chime in. Yeah. <laughs> Go everybody <laughs> with your Ari- with your Aries sun and Gemini moon. <laughs> well, well. First of all, I'm going to ask both of you too. Uh, what mediumship is to you? Uh, Eddie gave us his version. I'm not even going to try because I'm just kind of a spectator. Uh, but Colby, go ahead and, and tell us what mediumship is to you. Well, I agree with uh, Eddie on a lot of levels. Absolutely, that's that's just how it works for me. But kind of the definition, psychic is me connecting to you your energy, your aura, your soul directly. Mediumship is me connecting to someone or a guide uh, in the fourth dimension. Mm-hmm. Someone who's crossed over, ideally, um, would be that connection. So it's more of a, um, uh, me talking to literally another spirit. You know, someone who may have existed on the earth plane, but is now in the spirit plane. And we do that exactly like Eddie said. You do it by, uh, we raise our vibration and then spirit will lower their vibration because they want to communicate, because right. they want to show us they're around. I, I thank you for that because <laughs> a lot of times everyday people whom we all love and adore have a tendency to confuse mediumship and psychism. Yes. And yeah. a lot of people well, will call and say, hey, I want you to talk to my dead grandma. And I'm like, that's not my specialty. Yeah. I'm a psychic that predicts things connected to your heart chakra and future predictions and if a dead person pops in yay yeah, yeah. They, they may not know a lot of people yeah. do, a lot of people say i don't understand the difference um so it's great it's great that we can spread the word and help mm-hmm. help the listeners understand it exactly what exactly. about you rachel well i i actually agree with everything that you said and i kind of look at it as you know as we're translators right mm-hmm. because because spirit like like you said they they we have these loved ones on the other side and and maybe ones that we've never met maybe their ancestors yes. maybe their guides uh, or ascended masters and and they have things that they want to help us with and they want to participate in our lives and and so i kind of see that my role as just being the translator like i i, I know how to speak this language it's you know yeah. language of symbols and uh and and sensations um and i know how to speak that and and if i can help someone with that like with that kind of translation and that kind of communication then then it just makes me happy and you said uh, astrology and mediumship work well together very much so so a lot of times i'll get a message so i i can shift it there are different types of it's it's different types like you said with psychic mm-hmm. um and and astrology is very scientific it's very it's very methodical it's it's a different kind of brain brain style like yeah and so i can shift gears so if i get a message from spirit then i can look at a chart and say oh, okay here's the timing of things here's the psychic pr- or not in the psychic prediction but here's what here's what this cycle represents and here's what's happening for you and why this message makes sense mm. which is phenomenal If for creative artistic people like me, whom I can paint a room and decorate a house and talk to dead people if I'm lucky, (laughs) do psychic readings, do flower arrangements, do a whole party planning thing, but don't ask me to balance my checkbook. Don't ask me to add two plus two. So it's really rare I find someone like you that's got the left brain linear scientific Mm -hmm. married with the right brain creative intuitive and you bring it together. You're like your own best like Gemini frequency. What's so interesting is um, probably why we have such a connection is uh, I was a tax accountant for 12 years. Were you really? Oh my God, God, you're kidding. At a public CPA firm. So my, yeah, so my left and right go crazy. (laughs) But I I think it does help. It does help. Yeah. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, now I'm scared. I'm going to move over close to Tony, (laughs) y'all. So if you get an IRS notice, you can can email me. From your dad, grandma. Call me at Psychic Rebel. (laughs) We couldn't look. No. (laughs) (laughs) And if you have to go to court over it then we'll look at your chart (laughs) well you know there's a lot of people out there that well most of us are are intuitive uh be it medium psychic uh uh, empath whatever you want to call them but uh and you probably been asked this questions many times is when did you really realize your gift colby um you know for me i'm in a way, I'm really lucky because I have such a specific memory. I mean, it's so specific. And I'm really grateful to my grandfather who really at 
gave me such validation because so I was four years old and mm. my mom had put me to bed and I just I remember everything I was in bed uh, he was standing next to me and he was talking and he said Chrissy my family calls me Chrissy get <laughs> out of bed and go tell mommy what I said so I got out of bed and I went and, and told my mom and she had a friend over and my mom kind of started to cry and I really didn't understand. I didn't understand what I had said or what I had done. Um, and she's like, well, who told you that? And I says, grandpa. And she goes, and she's just looking at me. Well, my grandfather had died a, pri a week prior to that. Wow. 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 So, so I think by him, you know, talk about message delivery, right? right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and talk about validation. Mm -hmm. So that was one sign. And, and then there was just several instances growing up. But it's not like I, I, I was from a third generation psychic medium. It's, mm -hmm. So it's not like my family says, oh, we, we've got a little psychic on our hands, a medium on it. The, <laughs> nobody. It was unfamiliar. Right. Nobody yeah. defined it. Uh, it wasn't until a few years ago uh, but that the voices got so loud. Um, Did you think you were crazy? Oh, I thought <laughs> I was crazy. And I thought if I wasn't going to answer it, I was going to have a nervous breakdown. Mm -hmm. And the minute I started answering the telephone, the, the calls, um, my whole life just changed on a dime. Mm. And uh, that, that's, that's the story. What was the, what was the voices telling you? I mean, oh, oh, you want to okay? You want to hear the turning point? Yeah. Okay, it's also very specific. So as we were just mentioning, I had been a tax manager for a public CPA firm, been doing it twelve years, taking the CPA exam. The CPA exam is in four parts. So once you pass one, you have a time limit to pass the other three. Mm -hmm. So I had three down, one last one to go, and. By the time the fourth one rolled around, the, the voices were going crazy. And I kept saying, all right, well, let me just let me just take this. Let me pass this part, and I promise I will serve you. Now, I didn't even really understand what I was even saying or why I was saying it, but literally that's what I was saying. I was like, just, you know, you give me this, and I promise I will serve you. And it was the night before the exam, and, and I prayed that. And I took the exam and I failed. And in failing that part, I lost all the other parts. Oh, no, I had oh, to do it all wow. over. And I said to Spirit, why? I mean, why? And Spirit said, because there is no negotiation. You're to do this work. Wow. Ooh, that gives me goosebumps. Wow. And no joke. The very next day, I did my first professional reading, got paid. I never did, like, the free reading thing. I just, that was it. And from that point forward, I was working as a professional Wow, that's isn't that amazing? That it's is amazing. crazy, right? Wow. Isn't that crazy? But you know what? It, it it doesn't. I just feel like it's all it was was me answering the yeah. purpose. You know, when, once you connect to your soul purpose and mm -hmm. you allow that door to open up, it it, it happens so quickly. I feel like mm -hmm. I really do. And I think there's a lot of people that reason they're miserable in this life because they don't answer that purpose they don't mm -hmm. answer because the voices are you know that little voice that eddie always says the universe whatever yeah. telling you this is what you should do yeah. and they deny it yeah exactly. over and over so that goes for people listening too because it feels like that might be a message that that is that that, that that's coming up for a specific reason mm -hmm. so uh yeah well, I, I have a weird question for you uh, that is the first time I ever understood that astrology and intuition had anything to do with each other, I was doing a TV show. I think it was Terrence Gardino. Astrology and you with Terrence Gardino. <laughs> and um, and he, you said it in your perfect voice. I know. Yeah, you you did. Voice. Your spiritual yeah. voice. <laughs> he, said, he said, I can tell right up front that you're really psychic and that you have a, a really incredible relationship with the dead. Mm -hmm. He said, because it's right here in your chart. So does that have something to do with people being more and more mediumship or more and more psychic? Or Absolutely. And in fact, you know, it's interesting. So you both have Gemini pretty, pretty nicely represented in your charts. And, and, and that is uh, people with a lot of Gemini tend to be uh, Gemini is a sign of communication. And I find that people with a lot of Gemini in their charts tend to be uh, more geared toward either mediumship or psychic, um, psychic skills, psych psychic abilities. Um, that's definitely, it's definitely something that's represented in a chart. Also, people with really strong intuition or really strong gifts 
um, the ability to understand sort of what's hidden, the mysteries, like sort of occult sciences. Um, and, and both of you, I mean, I have your charts up right here and you both have that. And y you too, Tony, you have more than you even give yourself credit for. <laughs> hey, no, I, because <laughs> we were in the class yeah. and you were well, totally in the yeah. Williams class. I actually, I went to observe. Had a visitation. Oh. And I definitely realized that I had more than I, I thought I did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because of the master teachers, <laughs> Lisa. Yeah, they really helped. But yeah, yeah it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It is exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is exciting. It's, it is like a high that you can't even you, you can't even define. Oh, and it, it is hard to define. I think that's why a lot of people deny it. Mm -hmm. When a lot of people yeah. poo poo it that don't understand it because it is a totally different language. I like how you said mm -hmm. symbols and sensations, feelings, frequencies. It you have to adapt to that world or you can't be as good a channel or messenger i find so how did you rachel get started what what was your turning point mm -hmm. well okay so so i actually i grew up in a very like evangelical very charismatic family um and and so and we and and it I had a like, weird childhood and I also, my grandparents owned a funeral home. Oh, perfect. <laughs> wow. God, that's yeah. such a great You're book. A I know, I know, like, right? Hey, buddy, <laughs> so, and so two things like were happening. So, yeah, it was uh, two things were happening simultaneously. I would spend a lot of time in the funeral home and I would have to practice the organ because I played for church. And I and I'd be in the parlor with dead bodies all around me. Yeah. And they would I mean, I I remember like having one sit next to me and thinking, Oh my God, here I am playing Ode to Joy and talking to dead people. <laughs> and and so I grew up having this gift and then, you know, I ended up being, you know, having prophetic visions and all these things through the church. And and after a while I then when I discovered astrology, I I realized that um and and all the astrology opened up for me the whole new age realm and that's when i realized that there was so much this this is a big picture and i had only had one glimpse of of my, of how to use my gifts in a very small narrow context and so i was able to expand into them and um and you know resisted it for so long because it's such a we i mean like it's not a mainstream path nobody says i'm no. so proud of my psychic <laughs> daughter my astrologer daughter <laughs> no, <laughs> you know right. they say the opposite yes. don't yeah. tell anybody yes. or i will beat you with the stick <laughs> exactly <laughs> especially if you're from the south the south yeah. yes or north you know i'm from st louis so you know it's it's it's, it's pretty pretty frowned upon but um <laughs> i had a reading in 2006 and with my friend Marianne and I had like you resisted 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 said that's not what I'm going to do with my life that's just something I love to do for fun and this uh intuitive and medium Marianne Russell um gave me a reading and she said where have you been and uh and uh and I said I've been right here she's like <laughs> you need to hang up a shingle and you need to do this work right now and um she said start with three free readings and I did, and then my entire practice grew from that. Exploded. Wow. Mine, yeah. mine was in 1989, went to see a reader, was terrified. Um, she was the first real reader I'd ever seen. She called herself a creative sensitive, mm -hmm. and she was brought over from Japan to be studied by the Duke University School of Psychology and uh the other one that psychic people go to. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that yeah. one. <laughs> I just like it's my face. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and she would just close her eyes and do her little thing, and she was absolutely remarkable. But she said in 1989, in January, I still have the tape. She's wow. like, you're supposed cassette. to be doing it. Yeah. Was a track. Track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, why did you not bring the 90 minute when you brought 260 minutes? I was like, they were out of 90 minutes. Like, <laughs> and um, she said the same thing. She's like, you have this thing. You're supposed to be doing this and you're going to move out west and doing it. And I knew everything she said was right because I had already known it inside, but I'd have n ever nobody to say it back to me. Mm -hmm. And I remember driving away. I was like, okay, that's $80. I'll never get back. <laughs> and You got a lot more. Uh, yeah, I was, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. It was mm -hmm. life changing. Yeah. But I was so scared of everything she said was coming that I've seen since I was five years old was coming. And it scared me so bad into a little bit of a paralysis, yeah. but it was the springboard that got me where I'm at today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what helped you transition from that paralysis to to realizing it as a as a, as your calling? I love that question. I am really super shy and introverted, and I, people will get mad when I say these two words together. But literally, w the way I was raised, we were socially retarded, 
And there was no going to the neighbors and asking for a cup of sugar. You did not do that. You did not socialize. Mm. And if you went out of the house with your parents, it was to sit in the car while they worked or while daddy was at the beer joint (laughs) or to go to grandma's house. And I was so introverted. It was my desire to make people feel good. My desire to make people feel good was this big. And my fear was a hundredth of an inch smaller than that. Mm. So that was the leverage point for me, making people feel good, Mm -hmm. having their heart open up. And then I stepped outside of my fears because that's what I felt I was born to do. Mm -hmm. And the second I let myself do it, everything went up from there. I kept hiding. I I kept, because I I kept, you know, a little bit of the visions, but kept feeling like I kept seeing me in front of a massive group of people, massive audience, Mm -hmm. and like that my... You know, I lost my, how do you say, an, uh, anonymity? Yes, anonymity. Yeah. Anonymity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm from Jersey. We never pronounce anything correctly. <laughs> okay? But you look good doing but, it. But you know, <laughs> hey. But it's, it, I have more people correct me on how to say their name, and I'm like, that's that's what I said. And they're like, <laughs> no, anyhow. But I, I think I tried to hide from it, because I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. So really kind of, st- oh, it's, it's still painful. It's still like... But I breathe through it. Yeah. When we were in the Lisa Williams class, yeah. Um, it was almost the end of our friendship. Uh oh. Yeah. Be- oh no. Yeah, because I am really scared to death. To and I have more people. confidence. I mean, for him than he does for oh, himself. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got a bruise to prove it now. <laughs> I know. Oh. He kept saying, "Go up there, go up there," and I'm like, "No." I, it it was you know it was totally all brand new i was virgin territory and i was really and all of you were in there all the master teachers and i'm like oh my god you there's no ficus tree to hide behind <laughs> like a ficus tree could hide all of this love okay <laughs> but it's fascinating how it's the desire the purpose mm-hmm. the incentive the de- the yeah. wanting to connect with people and help them connect with their true self yeah. i think that's what we're all born to do mm-hmm. on yeah. some level mm-hmm. yeah and i think I think I I know one day I was like I don't need to do this I don't need to do this and yeah and I just heard but it's not about you it's about those you help totally totally got yeah, me yeah. got yeah. me there but I, it is true there's nothing oh that the, you know even when someone cries or laughs or they yeah. just they leave you can almost see them lighter mm-hmm. you can see mm-hmm. because they they know someone connected to them in a way that they haven't been able to talk to someone in so long yeah. and yeah. Oh, I'll tell you. And 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 for me, like some of my favorite are when like I've I've worked on a couple of missing child cases. Oh wow. And um or you know like people who who were wrong who wrongfully died and there was no way to prove it and so the family has this unrest and and when you're working on those kinds of on those kinds of cases there's just this sense of um, the purpose is so much greater than me. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah. a lot of times they'll walk away and I'm like, I can't charge you for that. Or, you know, like not, not you, everyone, you know. but some of them, it's like, oh yep. my God, I, that, that, oh. that, uh, that was like a gift to be able to participate in, in this, in this with you. Like, what what mm, creates the uh, specificity? <laughs> meaning, I, like I remember being at my grandma's house, God rest her soul. She was a devil. Um, (laughs) and i was watching the houdini movie with tony curtis and it was about houdini's life who was fascinated with paranormal and especially mediumships and he made it his life purpose separate from being a magician to debunk charlatans and i mean it was his whole life purpose but he had sort of an imbalanced personality too because if you didn't say exactly what he thought you should say you were a charlatan Mm. but long story short I was there watching the movie, and I remember he was going to these mediums, and they were saying specific things from certain relatives that had passed. And right then, as a little boy in elementary school, I was like, that's what I want to do when I grow up. Aww. Really? Yeah, that's so sweet. I saw it right then. Now, I'd never seen it anywhere else before until James Van Prague blew on the scene mm-hmm. in, like, the early 80s or something on Sally Jesse Raphael. so so how is it that the specific like i always said then i want specifics when i grow up that way i know people will believe that there's such thing as a spirit world so is is it some i know you have to practice yeah Mm -hmm. which hello we all practice but is there something that makes it easier to get the specificity from non-physical um well for me 
it's pra- practice and I have a whole list of symbols that I use. So like, you know, a col- so I have a collection of symbols. That's what I need. To you do. know, like, um, you know, new job is this. It, it's represented to me with a paycheck with a star on it. You know, like I work with my guides to to get very specific symbols for for moves, for new babies, for breakups, for marriages, for divorces, for all like all the main things that you're going to, to get. And then sometimes the message will come out of the blue and I'll say, you know, like I've, I, I've had a grandmother hand a, 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 a lily flower and the person will say, oh my gosh, that's her name or that's, you know, that was her favorite flower. Or So sometimes it's also just asking, can you give me something specific? Yeah. Wow. How about you? Uh, I think for me, so I don't, I don't necessarily work with symbols and, and I do know a lot of psychics and mediums do. I actually teach it. I mm. teach people to create a directory Mm -hmm. of of symbols but for me i don't use them only because the communication i mean there's just such a communication that they just tell me so i just go oh okay yeah i I, i'll say oh what is it they want to talk about oh well you know what they're really stuck in their career and they're thinking about leaving their job and oh okay so so really so for me it's about interview with a spirit yeah. So I literally, so you have that's to keep, great title. That is, I know Isn't I like that. A great that. Title? That's actually, that's a good, that's a good book title. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And you really have to push it. You have to, you know, so many psychics and mediums, they either, I don't know if it's fear or they're just not thinking outside the box, but they'll kind of get something and then they'll stop. They'll we'll push them. Right. We'll push them. They'll right. say, you know, let's say, I always say like, let's say someone's showing you a, a woman at 40 and then uh, the person says, well, I don't, yeah, I don't know someone in who's 40. You have to ask the spirit, well, wait a second, were you born in the 40s or you show me the 40s because you felt good at that time? Or were you or a quarterback with a 40 the, on your chest? Yeah, what's, yes. show me yeah. why you're, you know, or I see silver hair. Okay, well, did you always have silver hair? No, it actually used to be strawberry blonde. Oh, really? Now, did you dye it, girlfriend? Oh, well, I did because God, I wouldn't be seen. <laughs> <laughs> some silver hair but you know what i mean yeah. so you create this interview with them people people it's like oh i connected okay all right i got the connection that's good and they're it's gone like, yeah <laughs> i don't want to lose it and it's like well wait a second talk to them like find out who are they what are they about what did they like what did they hate what are they you know and and mm. to me by allowing yourself to, to settle down and, and really allow yourself to embrace the experience itself, mm-hmm. it allows more details to come through. That, that actually brings up a question for me is, because spirit is so much higher mm-hmm. in, in frequency and in energy and all that. Is there sometimes some that have better uh, speaking abilities than others. I mean, do we oh, take our, our yeah, like absolutely. if somebody's like IQ of 50 <laughs> goes to spirit yeah. world, I mean, well, you know, <laughs> absolutely. So it's like anybody though, right? So, yeah. And you can, but some people in spirit, they, they may not be big talkers. Right. So my clear audience may not be as strong. So if my, cl- if they just, but they'll start showing me pictures of them, them folding their arms. I don't want to talk to you. Okay, well, you got to do something. Like, because why I the can't... hell did you show up then? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you can say to them, you know, what you can do is say, all right, you know what, do me a favor, start showing me pictures, oh, you know, okay. and they'll do that. So you kind of, you work with, work with them, mm-hmm. but absolutely. I, and I feel like some are just, some have built, some have learned how to use their energy mm-hmm. better oh, than yeah. others. Mm-hmm. It's like any, mm-hmm. any tool. Some are just going to be a little better at, and they're just going to zip right in and say, okay, listen, this is what you need to tell them. And da, 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 exactly. da, da. And why, right? do, you, why yeah. do you think that some spirits are, are pr- come with more than others? Is it, is it newer spirits or older, old, older souls? You I know, mean, or... I, that's what some people, there is a belief system. Oh, they haven't been crossed that long. They're, they're not really quite used to how to use their energy. For me, I'm not sure if there's a quite, oh, standard, Mm -hmm. but I just feel like, you know, they'll tell me, oh, wait a second, you know, I'm still trying to get used to this energy thing, but let me get better. Some just say, you know what, I never really like talking, so I don't really (laughs) want to do it, but I'll do this, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess for me, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if there's like a a cookie cutter formula. Because it's, people have to remember, spirit is not just, just generic term. Spirit is still people they're oh, yeah, people their personalities they're because we're 99.99 percent non-physical spiritual yeah. energy mm-hmm. in our you know our we makeup, are yeah. all of that mm-hmm. as it were and i think one last thing is at when a soul crosses over when a person crosses over into spirit it you know they there's reflections and there's lessons and 
how they're going about learning those lessons and their connection to the earth plane, I think also helps whether how communicative their ability is. Mm. Uh, I think so too. I, I also think that it was their belief system when they were here. Yeah. How many dead people will come in and they'll sit there. Like you mm -hmm. said, yes. they're watching and they're like, I yeah. didn't believe this shit <laughs> when I was alive. Yeah. And yeah. Now I have to really yeah. change my perspective. Uh, well, yeah. Then there's the people that were super open spiritually mm -hmm. on the earth plane. So when they get over, they're like, this is fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> and and sometimes too, they will the message will be uh the message they will come and they will give the message if I'm not talking. And it, and it's there's something there's a message in that mm -hmm. in that action or that behavior. So it's also having to learn the que the right questions like yeah. you were talking about, yeah. like the right questions to ask. Like is are they being closed? Is this yeah. person being closed off? Is this person testing you? Is this person did you have an, an argument, you know? Right. Like so so I think also, you know, just just navigating that that conversation and that that the and communication one of the my favorite things though is you'll get someone in spirit who definitely like you said they, they may not have believed it while they were living yeah. but mm -hmm. you know what it's unbelievable how much they believe now only because they they see it now they see you as a messenger yeah. mm -hmm. and they see you as a pathway and you're like you know what I'm gonna give it to you and and again you know expressing who they are or who they were in the physical world is so imperative so that the living person can really relate to them. You know, if it's someone who had their arms crossed and who didn't believe it, who, who was the skeptic, it, it's important to bring that forward because right. that's how the person's going to remember. Okay, yeah. this is what he's showing me what he was like, but let me just tell you, yeah. this is what he wants <laughs> to say, and this is what he's learning. I love that you said that because oftentimes, especially if they've been over a long, long mm -hmm. time, they'll come over the yeah. way the person in front of you remembers them, and then they'll go, like 10 minutes later, they'll go, okay, here's the tractor, mm -hmm. here's the thing, here's the pig with lipstick, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Yes. And he farted really a lot <laughs> and ate buttermilk biscuits. They're like, oh, my God, that's my grandpa. And then then they say, here's who I am now. Exactly. Yeah. That happens. Oh, I love, don't you I, love it? I yeah. love it when that happens yeah. because they put the Bible down yeah. that they were thumping when they were uh -huh. alive. And they go, God is everywhere. Right. Yeah. Right. Even in mm -hmm. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's so interesting because one question that I always get when I do mediumship, and I'm sure you probably do too, is that th I always get the question, "Are they okay?" Yes. Yeah. Are you know how Better are than they? Us. I know, <laughs> and I tell them, I'm like, "Do you even have? You have no idea." Like the the. It, yeah. I, I actually had a life after death experience when I was oh, really? yeah when I was nineteen like I actually crossed over and did the whole and it's like the piece you just cannot even explain it like you just cannot e there are no words there are just no words it is and it and there are no words period it's all being and it's it's so amazing and so uh, and so yeah so that that question it always it, it's always interesting to me because it's like it it's just I don't think we we ha we know here on this in this dimension on this plane how incredible it is over on that the other feeling. side yeah, yeah. so was yours a car wreck no it was uh, an asthma attack actually mine was a car wreck really? at 19 no yeah. 19 well, wow mm -hmm. you know it's always i was always like how did I know I have a near life death experience <laughs> right? you're one of the lucky ones yeah. well yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but actually there was one, I, I think it was one, yeah. but yeah, I was really young. Um, and I almost, I keep trying to ask my mom what the age was because, but you remember, you know, those star mints, the red and white ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So I was, Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I was sucking on one and I was definitely young and we were at my mom's friend's house and I was sucking on one and it got stuck in my throat and I mean, it was stuck and I can remember the stuck. I can remember the panic, um, and then I can remember just going to my mind. I couldn't talk, obviously. And that pain. And yeah, and right it was there. just all of a sudden, though. I can remember my mom flipping me upside yeah. down. Mm -hmm. um, but then all of a sudden, it's like I'm not in my but I can see my mom. Like I can see like I'm looking at her. So obviously, I wouldn't be able to if I had been upside right. down. Mm -hmm. So I could see her fear and I could see her panic. And she was pounding my back. I mean, like fist pumped like mm. fist pounding i mean this is like a long time ago so that's how they resorted to everything right. it was, they were not they were not teaching the heimlich yeah right, right? right come here i love you let um, me beat you yeah but so it's kind of like all i remember 
You know what I mean? So can I say I crossed over? I, I yeah, don't you know, were, but you I were was def- looking. You yeah. were out of your body, yes, multidimensionally totally. yes. looking back down at that you. That I right. remember, but and I don't remember anything else. That's, wow. that's the way, that's, that's how it is. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you had one. Look at you, girl. I, know, see, I almost died, too. <laughs> now I feel left you out. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not doing readings. Oh. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I, w- I was thinking about this. You know, everybody here that said that, you know, they were born, we're, we're all born with it. But a lot of people say, you know, oh, once you get out of uh, ch- childhood, yeah. that's when we forget how to yeah. see. But why you three didn't? Well, why some people. You know, I have an answer. Okay. And then you guys can. <laughs> no, I, I was curious because, you know, you know people why? say you're taught to. Well, I'm yeah. sure every you one were... of you were taught not to do it. So mm-hmm. yeah. why Absolutely. you? Well, my mom, I think, ran out of the house. I think she was, what the? What the? <laughs> Dead lady in the closet? Oh, hell no. Yeah. But, you know, because I think the people that hold, and, you know, and some of us may have forgotten it or we kind of, you, you know, you didn't step into it. Mm-hmm. But what it is is because you have a higher calling. And you're not just meant to kind of be intuitive or just tap in. You are meant to do this as your work. Mm. And I think the people who will hold on to it and the people may who, who have been born in and then step into it, it's because it's your calling. Mm. And everything you do outside of that calling after a point, mm-hmm. you keep getting knocked out yes. of it. You're not going to be a choreographer. Yeah. You're not going to be a dancer. Yes. You're not you going to be a designer. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not going to be a CPA. You do it just enough to but, get whatever life experience you need to be the channel and the yes. catalyst. Exactly. Yes. How about you? Exactly. No, I agree. I completely agree with that. I think, you know, from an astrological perspective too, a lot of times you can see your, your destiny. You can see not, I mean, destiny is something that's shaped over time too but but you can see like career tendencies and you can see sort of like where where you use your gifts to serve the world and and so you know when I look at my chart there's no way I could not be doing this work you know that's Mm. another thing because most charts have sort of a generality to them and there's very little specific specific things you can like say oh he's creative he's artistic that could be almost anything Deborah Clement she's a good friend of ours and a good friend of the show she, I'd never met her. She's doing an astrology reading for me, and she says, "Okay, around seventeen or eighteen, you started dancing, and around thirty-five, thirty-six, you stopped, but only after you moved a great long distance." That's I was like, "How do you know that?" She's like, "It's right here in your chart." <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. amazing to me. Yeah, and I know what you mean about the free will. Yeah. We choose yeah. whether we're going to follow our destiny or if we're going to. Do the hard knock life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like you said, there's such incredible, there's actually like a spiritual suffering mm-hmm. that happens, like this de- depression yeah. or right. like this oh. angst yeah. if, when you're not and, on your path. Yeah, and everything is such a struggle. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything just feels like so much work. And then when you're stepping in, it just feels way too easy. And then you second guess it because it's, oh, it's so kind of so like easy. This, yeah, it's like, well, okay, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Even well, in reading that used to be real. Well, I worked in corporate. I worked in oh, suit and yeah. tie in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I lived in Kansas City, I had a uh, psychic reading with Sylvia Brown. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. wow. That's so, fun. Oh, yeah. that's wild. And, so, and she told me all the stuff that, like, what I'm doing now. And I didn't even. That was 20 yeah. plus years ago. Yeah, that's beat at least 20 years ago and i was like oh okay yeah uh-huh and she goes you're gonna be doing stuff like like i'm doing and i'm like what readings she said no but you're gonna be using your words to change people's lives and i'm like oh, okay whatever and she told me about the time period of my age when things were going to start taking place and i'm like okay and i was still in kansas city well then i moved out here in 32 at 35 when she told me that the things were going to start that's when things like started just opening. Like it was weird. It just kind of thirty five is an interesting year for humans. I wonder why is that? I don't. I don't have no idea. But a lot of good stuff or bad happened <laughs> around thirty five, thirty six. What is it? That? Actually, I, I can tell you what it is. So at thirty six, uh, th- so every there are s- some specific uh, in astrological influences that hit us and and are like sort of midlife crisis transits or like big change transits and one of them happens at 36 and that's the pluto square oh and it's usually a time when you get you get put in touch with what it is that you're going to leave a legacy like how you're going to leave a legacy and because all of a sudden you start getting focused on your mortality some people 
have actually like major death kinds of experiences like or like illnesses or divorces or things that feel like a death and and they start thinking about the future um mm. so that happens to everyone at 36 um that is crazy between between 35 and 37 right. wow. but 36 is really like that, that and then window. you get to make a new choice one way or the other yes totally and pluto is death and rebirth pluto is you know it is the planet of transmutation and so it's usually a really big it's an internal shift that usually has uh, external um you know effects and, and and it plays out in your life so mine was i came out to la at 35 and they put me on the radio here on star 98.7 and then they gave us a job on the radio on star 98 and two months later i was living here I, but i moved here as i turned 35 36 or 36 Wow. So that I mean, that's pretty strange. It, it's yeah. I mean, it was literally and it landed in my lap, but I've also followed it mm -hmm. and been here ever since. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, when's the next one, Rachel? When's yeah, the I was next one? So there there's, there's there's one at forty two. That's a really I big already one. Already passed that one. There's <laughs> one at at forty six. There's one at fifty, and then there's the big Saturn second Saturn return, which is fifty eight, fifty nine. Okay, I'm fifty eight. Right, I have yeah. this year. I'll be forty six this year. Yeah. This is oh so <laughs> flipping cool. Yeah. Uh, there's also wow. the Saturn return is twenty eight and a half, twenty nine, and that's usually when the universe is like, okay, get on your path. <laughs> right. Get on your path or we're gonna we're gonna give you some trouble <laughs> yeah. so it's like that that's the that's the coming of age that's when you like really mature astrologically and that's when i started i'd always done little uh private I, no one knew i was psychic except for my very 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 best friend hmm. and he passed away when i was 29 or 30 mm. and then i came out of the psychic closet and started doing it he said as long as you do this your life will be perfect i'll watch you from over there Aww. i mean that's i mean there's that's, all these things awesome. you should do just a book just an ebook on those those significant oh my god i've never idea. heard this yeah, that's a really and then if idea. you go back at 42 what mm -hmm. were you doing at 42 what was his name <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> what was I, I was starting this See, company. that's what i'm talking about yeah. what were you doing uh, well, th this year was my 42nd year, so oh. I... So you're launching your whole new life. Yeah, I, I uh, am f at 42, right. I, I uh, quit my job and now, I... That's big. Became, mm -hmm. uh, did this work, stepped into it fully and started to embrace it, became the master teacher in the program. And yeah, it was a big, tough year. I mean... yeah. It, it, I was like, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. Oh, it's terrible. Oh. It, well, it, that's, that's pure desire and pure resistance running simultaneously yeah. like mm -hmm. this until mm -hmm. you have that 100th of one yeah. inch thing well, that shifts it. And then it's like, okay, I can do it. I can do it. Yeah. Well, and that's really what helped. And you know what's interesting? There's this just talking about that fear that, you know, yeah. like you were saying. Um, I, I just happened to listen to a little podcast yesterday. It's a, kind of a new podcast. And was he talking like this? Uh, <laughs> well, no, no, it was it was two girls. Um, and they kind of, you know how women are. They I don't know why women in podcasts tend to have a little bit of a, a cackling kind of thing going on, but they do. <laughs> so it's a, it, it's a little too Why women. are you looking at us? Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but they, so it was, but, but what was interesting is they had a guy... And he talked about fear, and his was fear of rejection. Mm. Um, and he created these tasks every day based on a, a Russian training, like a kind of a, I don't know, SEAL or SWAT team training. Mm -hmm. That's what they, anyhow. But it's like little index cards that he would give himself every day. Go and ask someone for a piece of gum. Go and ask someone for oh. a ride. Wow. Oh, I Go love and that. Go and look at someone and, and smile at everyone you look at today. So all these little, so that he... Every day he had to work through fear mm. to kind of make that accomplishment. And he said, you know, what really broke it down is, A, he was doing it every day. But B, he found out that he was rejected far less than he had been in his mind. Mm. Wow. wow. I, and, so he literally kind of created this little thing and he sell them online. And next thing you know, all these people are taking this little exercise and doing it. And I thought, how powerful. Yeah. We could all do that. And I could even, and I'm, you know, part of me is like, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, Colby, you know, <laughs> but it, it is right. Because it, you know, in doing this work, I think the greatest fear is the fear of being wrong. Mm -hmm. or, what if oh, I'm wrong? Or hurting Completely. somebody, oh, which is, makes yeah. us feel wrong. Yeah. Like we weren't mm -hmm. enough. And cause we're, yeah. we, 
we take this so mm -hmm. responsibly yeah. And, yeah. and we want everybody to feel good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes here's what I learned the hard way at oh. 54, honey. Some people don't yeah. want to feel good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people don't. They just don't. Yeah. Right. The also, the other thing too, is I think that it's so important. This is a really, I mean, this, this kind of brings up something that, that I, that I think all of us deal with, which is the ego yes. can, can mm -hmm. get in, in, into our way, in our yeah. way. And so, so much of this work is, is is constantly working on on yourself yes. on your childhood stuff on your you know psychological stuff mm -hmm. to clear all of those ego ego constructs that mm -hmm. so that you don't give misinformation because yeah. there's there's sometimes i mean there have been times when i've been inaccurate about something and i'm oh, like yeah. and i go inside and i go and beat myself up yep. and then i'm like why why yeah what what was that supposed to teach me and sometimes there are i found that um, that sometimes the misdirection can be helpful. Mm -hmm. So there are some occasions when, mm -hmm. like, I've been wrong about something because if I had said your company is going to collapse, you're going to go bankrupt, you you, you know, <laughs> the the person would have glad never, they paid for that. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> they would have never Gotten moved what? past it That's right. to the success. Exactly. Yeah. So and then so there's well, that, but then there's also sometimes when it's like my own belief systems have gotten in the way. So. I like I constant every day before a session. I, I mean, before every single session, I'm like Check clear in. myself, mm -hmm. yes. get get rid of get yeah. rid of all my stuff. And I also find that people who do this work, we ninety percent of the time we're born, our souls choose to be born in very colorful childhoods, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. and right? Lots and lots of trauma mm -hmm. and yeah. lots of lots of lifetimes yeah. crammed into one, yes. so mm -hmm. that we have that life experience, so mm -hmm. that the person in front of us can feel that empathy and yes. that compassion. Yeah, and I also think too, just even on the flip side of what you're saying, right, is saying, hey, I've been off target and I have to kind of go introspective and say what happened and why. But at the same time, there are times when I know the information is right. I mean, it, it just, it is what it is and the person may not be able to relate mm. and I have to trust it anyway. Yes. Yeah. And I, yeah. stick, I stick to my guns a bit on it. Um, even though they and this just happened recently where uh, there was a girl who had a reading and she had had a was going to do a reading and then she canceled and apparently I knew she went to somewhere else and I was like you know that's fine I'm just, I'm just yeah. not supposed yeah, to yeah. read then she came back and says oh I'd like to really have that so short end I did the reading and um and I, I was telling her some difficult stuff about a relationship and she was bawling and crying and 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 was like oh okay and then she had left a review where it wasn't as flat oh i you know maybe some people can connect i didn't just quite get it and i knew i knew it was because she was hurt and i knew that maybe she didn't want to she, she didn't want to hear, hear it, it yeah. Yet. Yeah, yeah but you yet. know i'll tell you what this girl booked another reading and i was like another oh. one really and i was like huh what the and so I went back to the Yelp and I looked at her review and it changed to a five star. And it said, and, and I have to give this girl so much yeah, credit. And she said, mm -hmm. you know what? She goes, it was hard to hear. And I, and maybe I just didn't want to face some of the stuff, mm -hmm. but she was, she was really right on mm -hmm. and I have to give her that. Yeah. And I just thought, you know, that's not about me. That's not about me. It has nothing to do. That just shows you her story and how she kind of got to that place and mm -hmm. you know how that reading helped her get to that place yeah. and um and it also i think sometimes helps prepare them even if they may not be ready to hear it in the moment yeah, right when it happens they're not so thrown off their game now because you kind of help them with it a bit you right. know what i mean mm -hmm. right and uh i to me it was one of the most gratifying readings because that of that because mm. i could see that it helped i could i could feel that i, I like that, that you got to the other side of that quick because yeah. it, it's like we might get a thousand compliments this is me being completely vulnerable mm -hmm. but when someone is ugly yeah it, it oh. just i, I have to really yeah. really get back and, and i have to ask myself the questions did i do the best i could yes. do mm -hmm. did i come from love in that uh -huh. reading was i as authentic as i could possibly yes. humanly be and if i keep answering yes to the questions uh -huh. then i i have to walk away from it mm -hmm. and it's really hard because you really want everybody oh. to be oh, happy yeah. Definitely. But, but i think when, when you get those negative reviews it's not it's not really nothing that you need to learn other mm -hmm. than you're making a difference because yeah. people are not always going to agree with you i remember right. when i first That's started because when i i remember when i first started uh, doing this almost seven years ago when uh, I started I got some negative comments oh yeah but 
instead of taking it in a negative way, I said, I'm making a difference. People yeah. are actually listening to what I'm saying and mm -hmm. they're disagreeing with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So apparently I must be doing something right. And I would rather be in a community where there were people who could do that than everybody agree with everything right. you say, because that freaks me out. Here's the Kool-Aid. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So what, uh, what I want to do before we go any further, we have somebody in the chat room. Uh, his name Hello. is Tuesday Miles. And so he had, a, I don't know if it's a question. He said, can we ask a question here? But it says, I walked away from my gifts, all of them. Even though I'm okay with it, with doing so, spirit seems to keep pulling me back to using them. So I'm, for me, this, I'm not a, uh, like you guys, and I want you guys to then answer. It must mean something to you because you've asked a question to our, our experts here. So... I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're, you're, you're in the right place. And I'm going to start with Rachel, and I'm going to have you okay. answer, and then we'll go down the row. Okay. Uh, hang on one second. Let me just find your energy. Oh, you're so available. Oh, my God. There you are. Okay. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> you <two miles>. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, please. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, you it feels like you actually had butterflies in your stomach. You had some resistance to even tuning in and, and, and listening today because there's so much of you that is mm, what I would say is 92 percent of your soul is is ready to come back into the fullness of your gifts and realize that you can do that without dropping any bombs in your life. You can do that without, you can do that just by making it a part of your everyday routine. Um, and it doesn't have to be something that you put your work or your, uh, or, or your, it looks like your family information actually gets in the way quite a bit for you. Um, so it doesn't have to be something that, that um, causes you to, to, uh, lose anything uh, it, it just think about it in terms of of of, of stepping back in and, and and go into it like you're going into the baby pool um, and and what I recommend is that you need a mentor you need a teacher you need a community you need people to help you to kind of welcome you welcome you in um, this looks like you have a lot of past life um, you have had past lives doing this work and being persecuted for it mm -hmm. And so, and so the gifts come to you naturally. You know how to use them. You know how to open them. Um, and I will pass it to the others. Cool. Um, will you read her question again? Sure. It says, um, I walked away mm -hmm. from my gifts, all of them. Even though I'm okay with doing so, spirit seems to keep pulling me yeah. back to using them yeah i think uh, you know for tuesday this this is not about it's kind of like what i was saying right i said i don't need to do this i was i don't need to do this and and spirit said it's not about you mm -hmm. and i think that's the same exact thing for tuesday it's it's not about her it's about spirit and it's about her calling so you know i think they're going to keep haunting her <laughs> until, until she yeah. accepts it because she's so gifted i mean she's just it, to me there she's so strong and so powerful and it's so obvious um you know but you know she has free will right so if, if she says mm -hmm. hey I, i'm not gonna do it they, they're gonna keep knocking uh, until the day she crosses over and then she's gonna come back and have to do it anyway <laughs> so <Right. laughs> yeah. so it's like at some point you just say tap out all right you got me spirit i'll do it and and you know i just think she has a lot to give people she she has a healing a lot of healing about her that, that will help people yeah. feel better and heal and um so that that's kind of my my take on it i feel like everything we're talking about is soul provoking mm -hmm. and it, it this is a great tv show uh -huh. by the way just sitting around talking mm -hmm. yeah with intuitives and i mediums always say and that like the view for psychics and yeah. oh, that would be awesome. oh my god yeah. let's, let's start it okay we got it yeah yeah, yeah the, i think you should yeah. <laughs> and there's something about it because there's not first of all there's a lot of non-camaraderie in our world yes, yes. and it, it might be spiritual people i'm telling you right now there's some cutthroat shit that goes on <laughs> uh but long and i mean that spiritually yeah. um, but what i think this is doing for tuesday is stirring that energy up it's what mm -hmm. everybody has set at the table i feel like there's going to be something exciting new slightly unfamiliar a little nerve-wracking in the best sense of the word that's going to be coming up around june july no later than august pay attention to that i also feel like somebody from the past and this sounds general my apologies somebody from the past is going to come back into the future and i think they're going to misrepresent themselves and make mm -hmm. you think that they are more 
emotionally available than they are. Thank you. They're showing me what you were saying with me earlier, uh, Rachel. I think before we went live, you looked at my chart and you said, mm, you got some trust issues? And I went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I feel like there's some trust things with Tuesday from the past that's keeping them from wanting to dive into the deep end of all of this good spiritual energy that they're asking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's some good change, two big levels of change coming in this year, one be between June and August-ish, the other one in the fall or late fall, both of 2015. And you got a little surprise with money coming up. It, and it might be as little as 70 72 75 78 But you could throw a one or a zero on that, and you could be all happy and stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know the time is going so fast. Before mm -hmm. Rachel gets out of here, I know we're going to be taking calls awesome. to do some readings but i want you guys to do yeah i want my chart yeah. oh, okay, okay cool so, cool, cool. <laughs> so, how about me first yes. and then and then we'll worry about you too that's right yeah. so rachel you take it you take it away all right so i have i have your chart up and one of the things that's really interesting um about what's happening for you actually Ooh is that first of all this is a really good time for you to be making partnerships so if you're wanting to do anything like co-write a book or if you're wanting to to um i know that you're you're teaching now and that you're doing things in groups and you're doing more things like that but this is also a good time to start of so, to sort of like work with like finding some strategic people that are your people like partner i want to partner with you i want to i want to do something with you i want to connect with you so this is a great time for doing some networking um and when i say this that i'm talking about from now all the way until the beginning of august okay and mm. then as of august your gifts are just going to expand exponentially and so i could see you actually speaking on platforms um Ooh. that are or, and leading leading some pretty significant pretty sizable types of of, of activities i see a book for you in another two years um, a publishing deal actually coming your way um, that that will be um, that will be something that's just handed to you it's almost like put in your lap and and wow. within three years you're gonna be like a household name so your career we love it career is really 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 significantly mm. represented for you love life's a little bit um you, more represented are you married are you you in a relationship oh or? god no <laughs> 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 well you know i i think actually as we get into late i think you've got to focus on your career for right and just like you know there's there's a lot of growth and spirits working with you to 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 elevate your you a little bit more mm -hmm. and and so you haven't you haven't connected with your person yet yeah because it's almost like you two are on different planes almost well what's interesting so i'll just tell you real quick one of my friends she's an amazing shaman and she's like you know what she goes y you haven't met him because she's like you like you said you know you're gonna be more of a name and you're gonna be on a bigger platform that's how he sees you mm -hmm. so he doesn't know you exist yet but once you kind of become you know and that's my biggest fear i mean one of my fears is oh my gosh like what if what if everybody knows who I am? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, you gotta, you got you gotta get that ego out of the way and just mm -hmm. say, move forward, move forward. Just keep doing the work, do the work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think, you know, and realize that there's that as long as you're working with spirit, you're always yeah. safe. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. And that's really what I rely yeah. on. I just keep saying, what do you want now? What do you want me to yeah. do? But I, I talk to spirit <laughs> a little differently. You know, I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, I don't know. Call I guess for words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, they probably I, like that. Though. Well, I found my space that I work in. Um, it's a beautiful space with a back studio, and and I was like, at first I was having trouble, and I didn't know, and I was like, you know what, spirit, you know what, if if this is what you're thinking, I'm supposed, then you bring it to me because I'm not doing it. I'm not even looking anymore. And then. Next day, text message, no joke. Text message, West Side Rentals, ding, have the perfect property for you. And I'm like, and I went, and sure enough, <laughs> if I'm not in that property. Wow. Fantastic. Uh -huh. yeah. See? Mm -hmm. yeah. They know best. They yeah. do. They do. Yeah. All right. What do you got for Eddie? Okay, for Eddie. Well, what's oh, Eddie got for me? I don't know if I can trust you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Eddie's going to read you. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie's going to read you. Hey. Don't oh, worry. am yeah. I? Oh, sh yeah. I, I need to get my act together. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, Sorry, on Eddie. One second. Let me, let me <laughs> Anything else I need to know, though? Uh, uh, mm, let's see. Hang on one second. The only, I feel like there is something else. Um, 
And I got three something in the twelfth house, right? Just you do. You have three okay. planets in the twelfth house, which is the house of the hidden of of the hidden of hidden things and and of spirituality. So it's it's a house that that in Saturn's in the twelfth house. When Saturn's in the twelfth house, um, and it's so interesting because I was looking at your Saturn when you said, "Is there anything else?" And I was like, "Yeah, there's your Saturn, your Saturn, your Saturn. You're in a Saturn opposition." Um, not right now, but you were a couple of months ago, two months ago, and you're getting ready to go back into it when oh Saturn no. retrogrades. No, here's here's what it is. Here's it's what it is. Oh, it's, 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 it's a time <laughs> of it's, 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 a, it's a time of test. It's a testing time. Oh, I hate that. Listen. But it's a time no, no. of growth. It's significant growth. But not to piggyback on what you're saying, sure. but yeah. it's going to be a huge good thing for you okay. because you've slothed off. You've learned the lessons. Yes. You've learned the lessons. You yes. learned the lesson. The lessons coming up, and you're uh. like, been there, done that. Not going to play the game. Oh. Boom. That's Let me just tell you, Lisa. Williams, you know, love her. I love, love her. and hate her at the same time. <laughs> I mean, it really. She's actually a friend of mine now, and and I just, you know, she means the world to me. But man, when we were, when I had to go to Lilydale for the master teacher oh, training, oh, wow, you went to Lilydale. Wow. Oh my yeah, god, yeah, I went. I have, I've gone <laughs> twice within like it was like within six months I was there twice, and I was like. But I had to be in a house with like six or seven other women. What, a whole city. Yeah, and 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 <laughs> I was. Wow. And it's hard. I don't like. I you know I don't want to be around people. I want to be in my own space by myself. And I think a lot of us who so, do this work want to isolate. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and but, and she's like, Colby, it's gonna be fine. Colby, it's gonna be okay. And it was tough. I mean, I was so fearful, and I was like resisting and i was like well i i have to do it and it has to be this way and it has to be and she's like it's okay it's all right <laughs> and she really you know she really worked with me like it's great and when i got to that house these women who i had never met before and mm. i was so afraid of the backstabbing and i was so afraid that of the happened. talk and you know that's just you know, and again, I think it's because of persecution. At some point, some some bad stuff We've happened. We've all had heads roll. And um, but you know, these women made me dinner, and they wow. helped me. They oh, Kobe, you have a reading. All right, let's kind of help get you settled. Like, it was so loving. Uh, mm -hmm. it was, it was, it, and it was, you know, it was, it was really an amazing journey. Mm -hmm. I would never trade. Oh, I, I wanted to trade it. And I'm so glad I did not because you're right. It really pushed me through so many lessons of, of myself and uh, it was huge. It was amazing. That's great. I love that. Yeah. Love to hear mm -hmm. that. It was awesome. Yay. Yay. Look at you. Hercules. 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 Rebel. 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 <laughs> rebel. 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 All right. So you have anything for Eddie I have, before you go? I have a quick thing for Eddie and then I have to then I have yeah, to take you off. have to jettison. Yes, I do. I have to transport. Um uh, speaking of which, Leonard Nimoy. I know. Oh, I, know. I was going to play yeah. uh, pay honor to him at the yeah. beginning of the show and I totally forgot to. Rest, is, yeah. rest in peace. Yes, okay. rest in peace. So Eddie this is, you have just entered a new cycle um, <coughs> just within, let me see if I can get an exact date when that started for uh -oh. you. It, actually, it started in um, January 25th. Wow. Yeah. And and what's oh. happening for you is is Uranus is has moved into your 11th house, which actually, it, it what it's going to do two things. Number one, it's going to attract some very eclectic people into your circle, and it's going to allow you to be part of new organizations and 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 maybe even rise into some leadership in in certain in certain groups with among groups. If you're thinking about doing anything like getting politically involved or, or or doing anything for you know like for a charitable cause or to make a difference, this is a really significant time for you it starts um it starts a four-year period for you where there's where you're there's there's just a lot of recreation that's happening in your life your identity is being shifted and shaped um you're i think going to even be stepping out of the the spot like into the spotlight even more um, and you're, and I think that you're even going to be embracing some of your healing gifts, like healing, hands on healing and doing some work maybe with, with, with actually like, um, like actually, um, the vision I get is that you're just, that you're going to be able to put your hands on someone and spirit will just move through you like a, like, like an energetic defibrillator wow. almost. Yeah. So there's, have you done any work with he hands on healing? Yeah. A Reiki master and all that stuff. And I see every single time I do a reading, I activate all of that. Great. And send it. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's something that's, that, that 
that your 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 concentration and your focus and your um, and your intention is um, much more specific now than it ever was before, and so you're going to be able to uh, to be even more effective in, in shifting energy and moving energy. Plus, uh, conscious like our consciousness is is shifting too. Yeah. So it's like we your gifts accelerating at the same time that that we are all elevating. It's there's just an opening for you now that there hasn't been before wow, wow. thank you thank sure. you that's so like spot on with some stuff that's going on that i can't talk I, about i was like oh does Lord. rachel have a minute for me to give a little something sure. something back oh should yes i, I <laughs> would oh hate yes. to <laughs> have her walk out and okay I know. all right so um i'm gonna just kind of tap in and tell you what i'm getting for you if you is that sure, okay with sure, you sure. okay perfect so what i feel like though there's a phase of um you're almost shifting more like i want to tell you you should almost be mentoring or training people you should have so i feel like that's even going to build mm. uh, grow and more and more around it all right and i keep saying hearing t for you to get your voice out there more so it's almost like I, I need you to really work on expanding your platform because people need to hear your voice they need to hear what you're saying all right there's also a feeling um i just want to tell you I, I have a very strong female in spirit for you she feels like your grandmother to me i got my grandmother jane's name so i'm not sure what your grandmother is but to me there's a connection feeling Alice, yeah. okay yeah. see you know let me just tell you i swear to god um mm -hmm. my grandmother's name is jane alice oh. whoa oh. all right so wow. i i will tell you that wow. is her middle name and all her, right so my, my grandma's youngest daughter is jane oh. <laughs> her, oh, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. anyhow uh, let me just tell you she steps forward because she really wants to help embrace you with this work it's almost like she works with you or works around you mm -hmm. okay and there's also a feeling of you know even the church thing it's very interesting because there's really so much support around that denomination for you, all right? Um, you don't have to choose between it. There has, doesn't have to be a left or right. Mm -hmm. For you, it's all one. Mm -hmm. And it's just you working as one with spirit, all right? And so even with... It's almost like even through your work, you are also doing healing with it. Mm -hmm. So just know that that's what you're doing, all right? Um, and I also keep seeing... The radio show. I keep feeling like there's a radio show for you, all right? Um, and it's almost going to be, I almost feel like it's in the car because I can dial in on my car. So it may end up being an AM station or something. But just to tell you, like, I can dial the dial and I hear you, mm. all right? So I feel like that's very much going to grow for you. Cool. And I really want to just tell you, you do have the ability to step in front of the camera. So just allow yourself to, you know, I, I will say just, the, may, may I, is it's just, you know... There's just a little bit of you holding yourself back, all right? <laughs> so you are the one. I, I'm now. I'm. I'm just telling you to like. Let's just kind of work through. Uh, it, it's like a what is that called? The revolving door, right? Um, what Hamster it, wheel. No, no, it's a revolving um, door. The, when a revolving, you're in a hotel and oh, the door yeah. spins. Oh, yeah. Oh, revolving yeah. door. Yeah. Okay. It's it's you know you you were trying to go around, but you you almost want to keep going around rather than go through. All right. So the spirit keeps saying, T tell her to go through. It's mm -hmm. okay now. So you're ready. I know you were waiting to be ready is what I'm hearing. Like you had to kind of say, well, I'm not ready. You're already. Alice is like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, all right. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank yes. you. Oh my God. That all made so, you Did have it? no idea how accurate. Okay. Yeah. That was like right at the right. spot. What, on. One last little thing. You're stepping into a new space is also what I'm hearing. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. So there's a new space coming up for you. It feels more living space. All cool. right. So I'll give you that as well. Thank you. Yay. 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 Well, Rachel, thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. And have a safe trip, and we'll see you thank next you. Friday at noon. Great. Yes, and next time I'm coming. Next time I'm here, I'm going to give you your reading. Oh, okay. Uh, you, get, you get an extended oh, one. Right. Yeah. Oh, love so, that. You thank like you. extends? <laughs> 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 thank you all so thank much. Thank you, love. Really I appreciate it. Wonderful. Seriously. All right. And we're going to, I think John Williams is going to be joining us. Hercules. For the, Hercules. Hercules. Um, we do have someone on the phone, and uh, oh. they have been waiting for a while. Are you there? I'm there. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine. I um, actually had you in the chat room, but I, I just it just kept loading and loading and stopped i couldn't hear you anymore and i thought uh-oh uh-oh well That's we are good we're glad you are here and uh do you have any questions for colby or eddie hi. or hi colby um yeah um actually i i kind of like what i would say retired from using my gifts um i kind of felt that my family needed more of my attention 
for a while, and although um, it worked for a short while, but it seems spirit really keeps pulling me back into it. Okay. And so it's, um, you know, I think with two also there was some fear that was there. And so my question for Colby is, is that um, if, if indeed that I do go back with, you know, and out of retirement, though, on it, is there a way to shift where I want to work at or with, 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 with yeah, what absolutely. I want to work with? Yeah, absolutely. So this is Tuesday, yes? Yes, this is Tuesday. Okay, perfect. Um I just, I don't know, I don't, I just had a feel. I'm like, oh, I think this is Tuesday calling in. <laughs> <You did. laughs> so was, good, good, <laughs> intu- good intuitive. I was like, oh, this is Tuesday. Yeah, it's Friday, but it's really awesome. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I'm feeling like is you absolutely can, because you know what? Your gifts are so strong in so many areas. Spirit doesn't care what one you choose to use. They just want you to go with it. All right. So I feel yeah. like you trying to step out and they, isn't it funny? They was like, nice try. Um, yeah. But what exactly. happens is, yeah. right, as you stepped out, though, other other of the gifts really became more enhanced, it, you know, even without you working on them, even out without you trying to ignore them, they're building and working. So now you have like a whole tool toolbox of and it's I almost feel like and correct me if I'm wrong, but I almost feel like you can do anything like I could give you cards, you know how to do cards, you know how to do psychometry, you know how to do healing, you uh, it's energy, energy work, psychic work. So, you know, I feel like spirit is saying, you know what, if you want to focus on one, it's OK Tuesday. Like you don't have to feel like you, you don't have to feel it. now the other ones are still going to incorporate in that work. Naturally, it's going to become a flow for you. Um, so I don't want you to worry about losing them or it's not going to work. I just feel like, you know, and here's the thing. All I want to say is when I feel like when you finally say, all right, I'm going to surrender. It's like <sighs> you'll get to breathe and relax. It will be the most relaxed you've ever been. It's, you know, all this stress and tension mm-hmm. is only through your resistance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like something, um, I, I, it definitely something uh, June, July, it's. There's a big opportunity coming, stepping forward for you to allow you to just say, all right, I'm going to do this. So I want you to allow the help that, that there's some people around you that are saying, you know what? I've got a space. If you want to come in, come here and do your thing, I want you to kind of take advantage of it. it it's okay. It's going to yeah. work out for you. Is this, Miss mm. tu- is this Tuesday from yeah. earlier? Well, I've yeah. met you guys. There was a workshop at Lisa's. And so, oh, um, you know, I went for the workshop. Lisa's been trying to get me in there forever. And I finally went and stuff. And so... And I, I left halfway through it, and I thought to myself, I'm toying with myself because I don't know. I feel like I don't know where I fit in anymore. You well, know, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And so. Did you leave it, before lunch or after lunch? Did you leave before lunch or after lunch Tuesday? Right after. I left, well, at lunch. Okay. At lunch. One of the things Tuesday is to let go of trying to figure out where you fit in. Okay. Just do your thing. And it's hard sometimes. It, it, it is hard, but if you play with it, I swear things will just release organically. Yeah, it's just, you know, and part of the leaving, it's kind of like, part of the leaving is you're almost afraid of like, what if I don't do this? What if I, what if I do do this? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so yeah, allow yourself. Yeah. That's you true. really I cried all the way home. Yeah, you, you, know, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, oh, what, you know, the success of it. I think also too, it's, it's, it's scary. Not so much the mm-hmm. name, of, but the success of making sure that I'm doing the right thing for right, you know, for people. Yeah, mm. you you really are though. Just you know, trust trust what spirit is telling you. I feel like they talk mm-hmm. to you all the time is what I keep hearing. So trust what they tell you um, and all the little, oh, my God, girl, you get so many signs and symbols anyway throughout your daily life. It's kind of <laughs> like I'm not sure what else you want them to tell you. I, it's kind of, especially all numbers. Are you seeing numbers on a clock? The loaf of bread at me when I'm doing the dishes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah see, it, it's just enough. It's kind of. Remember, you know, spirit, I, I'm a big believer. Spirit gives you a couple times to try to do it on your own. And when mm-hmm. you refuse to listen, then they yank everything out from under you and make it their own game. <laughs> All right? Um, I, I just about fell off the floor on that one. Um, <laughs> I got pulled out of bed on that one. That's hilarious. Literally, and it's 111 pulled right me now. out of bed. Yeah, so. Said, You've got to listen. And I'm like, Oh, this has been going on since childhood on it. So I finally said, okay. That's when I finally said, okay, I'm listening. Good. <laughs> well, we're glad you for called in. We really did. And, uh, <laughs> we, we hope this helps well, you. Well, thank you for that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Tuesday, you're going to be fine. <laughs> you really are. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for the great show. Oh, oh thank you bye. so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right. Well, you know, I think this is what, uh, again, a lot of people, and John Williams is here, by the way. He Hello. walked John. He came in. Hi. Hi I'm feeling the energy. John. It's really hot right now. I'm just I like, Woof. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to Truth Be Told with Tony and Eddie, and we have the psychic rebel, Colby, Ooh. in the house. I, I am having way too much fun, I will say. <laughs> no, you, well, you impressed all of us, because we all three were, were at the oh, Lisa yeah. Williams School, Lisa Williams. And, the, and we were so impressed by you, because you do have mm-hmm. an inner, energy. Uh, where a lot of psychics, you know, they do want to be come across very spiritual and demure, yeah. and but you, quiet. you, you are just how it is, yeah. how it is, and I love that about you because it, I think that's a lot of people want that, just a straightforward. Give me what what you're seeing, what you're what you've been told. Yeah, I, thank you, and it, it, right, and it, it always definitely come from a place of love, but mm-hmm. I just. You know, I just keep hearing this is the way to be. You know, I don't have to. The Jersey girl comes out. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, 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 I'm just like, you, yeah. you know, I don't have crystal balls and, and you know, I don't I read do. cards for people. It's not that I couldn't, but I just, I don't know. I just talk. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, this is what I'm getting. This is what I'm Clear let's just talking. Well, and mm-hmm. you've so got this wonderful it. animated en- energy anyway. And then mm-hmm. whenever the spiritual energy starts ramping up, ramping up, ramping up, it's almost hard for you to even stand still. Yeah. You, it's like, and oh, it's I fun to walk. Already, I yeah. Know, yeah, it's really yeah. fun to watch. Yeah. And it's like mm-hmm. the heart comes forward and the, it's just fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. You, you both give readings, and I know John used to give some mm-hmm. readings. And, and mm-hmm. so, t- tell me what it's like when you get that negative message or, or a message that they would take as negative. You gonna die? You mean that one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Molly, you in danger, girl? Yes, that one. <laughs> I mean, what? How? How do you? How do you relay that to to your? I think the person? most important thing is. You know, although you want to give it straight and, you know, I don't want to beat around the bush because I just don't, um, you know, I have a level of such compassion. I I just, you know, it comes, the the more love you have, the more you just trust that they're ready to hear it. You know, spirit Mm -hmm. wouldn't be giving to me if they weren't in a position and ready to hear Mm -hmm. it. And it's not up for me to judge that. It's not up for me to um, make a decision. It's up for me to deliver it. Mm-hmm. I am a messenger. That's my job. And don't you find that people who really get that, they, the audience can feel the difference yes. between the person who just wants to be a performer yeah. and go, look at me, look at my mm-hmm. gifts, look right. what I'm doing for yes. you, as opposed to, yeah. it is what it is. I'm here to be of service to you. Yeah. I want to connect with you mm-hmm. with this message, and then I'm going to cut everything else loose. Yeah. I think people can feel that authenticity. I, I really feel like they can, because we're all connected. Mm-hmm. And, when, and especially when hearts connect to hearts, people feel it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's not it's not always easy to, mm-hmm. to, to, but, you know, people have to embrace change. Yeah. And, and I think the more you can embrace change, the more... You can say, all right, something better is there, and there's a reason this is happening. And people naturally, out of habit, (laughs) have a tendency to, they want the change. They'll talk about the change. They say they really want it, but they really don't. They want things to stay the way they are, but be different, and they want to be happier. So it takes the work, like what you spoke about earlier, the guy that used the cards to get past his fear one little step at a time, yeah. one step at a time, mm-hmm. one step at a time. Mm-hmm. And then he got past his fear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what I, you know, one of the thing is, that, you know, is when I'm afraid to do something, I, oh, that's scary. Oh, my, does that scare me? Yeah, but does it also excite you? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then I do it. Do you, would you approach somebody you were attracted to? Uh, to what flirt or I mean, It'd be like how you doing? Oh, how you doing? If you're gonna <laughs> say it, you gotta get <laughs> it right. right. Like, Mine, mine's you know, the, I'm not, not LeBlanc version. <laughs> Yours is the good one. <laughs> John Wayne, how you doing? Do no, yeah. no, how you doing? Um, how you doing? Would you do Yo. that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would. I'm not a. I'm not afraid to to do that. I just. Uh, I mean, love for me is such a off topic because I'm. I don't. I forget to look at, you know, I'm so wrapped up in spirit Same, that I yeah. it, that I just kind of forget that, oh, wait a second. Has that affected your relationships before? 
Oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> Let me. First I would love all, to make love to you, but the room is filled with people. <laughs> oh, love it. Yeah, forget is, the dog staring. There, is, there are That's times. Crazy. I mean, I had one relationship. I was in it for such a long time, like fourteen years. Oh. Wow. And yeah, we met at, when we were pups, and um. But there are so, and and he's definitely what right wing conservative. Oh. Oh my God. Yes, mm. and. There were so many instances I would say something and he would be like, God, you must be psychic. And this was way before all of this, <laughs> oh, right? <yeah. laughs> and um, so, it, like I said, it had been there. And, you know, and but there was a time, you know, to this day, I, you know, I feel that he had had a romantic relationship with a roommate. And while you were together. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would I was. And I mean, my everything you knew that you in knew my that you knew that you core, knew. everything. And to this day, you know, I, I I was never able to be validated by him on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but to this day, I now trust. I go, you know what? It's okay. You know, and I'm not even upset or angry or anything over it. It just made me go, huh? There, I, I even another. There was another relationship. See, that's the thing. This is why a psychic can't have a relationship because if. <laughs> If you cheat, I am going to know. Oh. And, and that to me is... We do know. But there was... So there was another one. This is... Look, a little... Okay, this is when, I, you know, we all can be a little little psycho. So a little psychic, <laughs> psycho. Psychic, uh, psycho. That's another, that's another, that's another movie. And uh. all in the same. Uh-huh. And, and, and he was someone... And I kept feeling like the ex was still around. I kept feeling it. And he's like, no, no. And I'm like, mm. mm-hmm. he's talking to her. And he's like, no, no. And I'm like... I mean, it got to a point where, again, it was that same strong instinct feeling that, so, uh, you know, he he was taking a bath and, and I happened to fall across his email. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and I just, you know, it was mm-hmm, open mm-hmm. and and sure enough, if, if there wasn't an email from his ex saying, oh, I just got back from a trip in india made me think of you got your little gift mm-hmm. oh um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm. yeah but you know what it's okay it, it's you know because the thing is is um you know you don't you don't want to be in a relationship with someone like that anyway no. i mean it, it's no. and it's not saying that they're a bad person because right. they're not right. you're just it, you, it's not your match and that's a good thing to know mm-hmm. you yeah. know so many people try to stay with oh the wrong God, yeah. match because they don't want to be back out there or they they're they afraid what, change. what if it's the best it's going to get what if I've invested so many years with this person mm-hmm. i'm throwing it out the window no you're not you yeah. invested <laughs> it for a reason mm-hmm. So you can get the heck out. Absolutely. Well, you know, we're on a we're on a historical lot. You know, Gower Studios has been here a hundred years. Yeah, many people have come come in and out of these doors. Mm -hmm. When you walk into a place like this, do you see spirit? Um, You know, I think it's one of those things where. I have to say to myself, am I seeing, sp-? because it's such a natural part. I don't know. I don't know what it's like not to see spirit. Mm-hmm. I don't know an existence without it. And I think that's wow. why it took so hard to understand. Oh, oh, I see. There. Oh, that's what they are. Because it's been around. It, it's all I know. I don't know a life without it. I really, really don't. Um, so when people say, oh, you just turn it off. And it's like, I mean, can I? turn the dial down yeah but can mm-hmm. i turn it off i don't think so it's like the engine is always running mm-hmm. it's just whether or not i rev that engine to to kind of mm-hmm. pull it up you know yeah. um and when you say you see do you actually see with your well let me just tell you yeah well, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right so <laughs> it took a while to understand that sometimes you see spirit in your mind's yes, eye right yeah. not not it's not always physical. Physical is physical mediumship. Well, mm-hmm. there's something called mental mediumship. Sure. Mm-hmm. And mental mediumship means I see it in my mind's eye. Right. Or you just start having a conversation with someone that is other than yourself that you think could be you. Um, so that's kind of mm-hmm. how the chain of thoughts is. It could be a thought, a quick pop sure. in the head or a quick shadow. Um so that to me is mostly how it works. Okay. But boy, I will, I will just. <laughs> there are a couple times where some, uh, you know, sometimes that physical mediumship 
and I will like see someone walk by and it will scare the bejesus out like, of me. I don't like it and, either. And I'm in, or especially at night, I'll tell you, the worst is at night. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and obviously there's a reason at night because your guard is oh, kind of down, your subconscious right. is Relaxed. open. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, like I always say to people, I'll be in bed and I'll be like, get ready, go sleep. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, like, and it's weird because all of a sudden my heart will start pounding because I'm like, oh my God, someone's in the room. Yeah. Someone's in the room. And I just, my eyes will shoot open because I'm so, and mm -hmm. I'm like, huh, because I feel it. It's sure. so, such a sensation, it, clairsentient, yeah. clair, you know, feeling. Um, and, and being then, yeah. startled. And I always yeah. tell Nobody them, wants to be startled. No, no, no. And I always Especially tell them, do yeah. not do anything to scare the crap out of me. Right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting. Yeah. Oh. I was There's so many things. Oh, yeah. I was teaching a class one time, mm -hmm. um, a spiritual class, psychic class, whatever it was. And I'm just talking. Oh, and something talking like and talking. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And something. out yeah. of nowhere, <laughs> I, this man just walks by oh, yeah. and walks through the wall. Yeah. And I'm like, da, 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And everybody yeah. went, what? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because it's the, when you see yeah. a ghost, yeah. mm -hmm. there's no other look other than you've seen a ghost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people were like scramming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was fun to see. And the woman who owned the building ran right to that room. It was her room. Uh -huh. It was her massage office. And it turned out to be her father. But mm -hmm. it, he just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And I happened to be standing and seeing it. But you have no control over it. It just oh. is what it is. Yeah. And that didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. But if I'd been there by myself in the middle of the night and seen that, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, put my little bubble of light up, yeah. call in my big teacher, <laughs> send my spirit guides. Yeah, it's it's freaky. Yeah. No, it's it, it still is... Uh, yeah, no, it still scares me. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. A lot of people. So I want to just say to people, hey, you know, if it scares you, that's okay. Mm, oh like, yeah, sure. No, sh someone's in your room. No <laughs> shit, it's gonna scare sure, you. Yeah. That's okay. And I love that right. what you said earlier. You get a say so uh -huh. in what is coming through. And oh, so if yeah. you don't, I, will, like, I told my mom, I said, yeah. don't you scare me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and and I will say yeah. one of the best things is. You know, I've always felt protected. I, and I yeah. think maybe mm -hmm. because of my grandfather mm. from the age of four, I've never, ever worried that a negative entity will step forward. Mm -hmm. It's not how I work. It's not acceptable. It's not where um, your mind goes. I have a gatekeeper. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I didn't even realize that's who a lot of times I was talking to. Is it, you know, yeah. I have a gatekeeper. Right, right, right. Uh, and he's he's a big dude. Yeah. Um, and and he, he is ruthless. I mean... <laughs> You know, people have to fight to kind of get in. He won't yeah. just let. Any, wow. He's very protective of me. Mm -hmm. um, That's great, though. Actually, it's yeah. that, so yeah. I never worry. I just don't. I don't worry. And the one thing I will tell the, the people, like, mm -hmm. hey, listen, if I feel okay, you, it's cool. You want to hang out? I don't mind. Like, I don't say, hey, you got to leave me. I'm like, you want to hang out? It's cool. Do me a favor. Just don't just shut the door randomly. Don't drop something oh. on the floor. Don't do something sure, physical. Right. You just you you stay in there. I'll stay in here, <laughs> yeah. and we will we will mutually exist. Oh, can I tell you something crazy? You yeah. know yeah. what? Yeah, I want to hear it. Oh, I've been okay. So I do. You know, I've always kind of said animal communication a bit, and, mm -hmm. and I don't. But there is just some cats, and oh. I am like in my house. You know, I'm renting a house. Mm -hmm. I move like, and I can my sense of smell has becoming crazy where all this like i'm starting to really smell and i go it's spirit i'm like oh like and it does it gives you that little heart rate i'm like mm -hmm. but there is just there are some so i was smelling cat and i'm like almost like and i'm like and i kept thinking did a cat die in this house or mm -hmm. what, what happened in this house and well there's two neighborhood cats in the last couple of weeks who've been showing up at my house and just they'll be at the front door just sitting there i'm like uh hey <laughs> and um weird it's been amazing i'm like uh, but i think it's just another opening up so mm -hmm. it's not like there's something in particular i think right. it's just becoming more and more expanding and you'll start doing readings probably for animal communication yeah eventually. i've done them mm -hmm. i've done them in the past mm -hmm. um and i certainly don't i, I definitely don't mind mm -hmm. um but if it steps forward, it steps forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's just like I yeah. mean, it's been. Well, how does how does sense. a animal step forward? Because they're for not. For me, it's is, the same. It's no different. And mm -hmm. they um, have a voice. Yeah. Or? No. Really? No. So it's okay. So here's what I okay. So here's what it's like. It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. it, it 
They talk, so, you know, it's the same as no different than someone who speaks a foreign language. Mm -hmm. They will communicate in perfect English to me, mm -hmm. right? Really? Because they wow. know, in spirit, here's the thing, spirit has to communicate. They know, spirit is very smart. Right. They know you are the messenger. Mm -hmm. So they know they have to deliver information in a way that you can get forward. Mm -hmm. If they're only gonna talk in a foreign language, how am I gonna right. understand yeah. it? Right. Yeah. Unless it's just pictures. So, so mm -hmm. they will they will say, they will say, I speak a foreign language. Okay, so I understand that they speak a foreign language. English is not their first. They may not have even spoken English in their living life. But they will communicate again because it's just communication. Mm -hmm. right. All right. So it comes forward to me as English. It's the same thing with an animal. It's or even my I, I used to have two Siberian Huskies and one he would. Oh, wow. I used to have to watch my thoughts because I knew he and I could talk psychically. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so You're I like, had he's to, humping my leg. What is that? No, no, it was more like it was more at the end of his life. Oh, and okay. it, it, I mean, it was always there, but definitely towards the end of his life when I would say, oh, I feel like you're gonna pass soon. And mm -hmm. he would answer, I am, but you are gonna be okay, and I'm gonna stay as long as I can to make sure you're mm -hmm. strong enough. And I'd be wow. like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, but it's gonna happen then. And he goes, it's okay, I want you to know it's okay. Mm -hmm. And it was weird, I mean, it was this weird thing. But it's, it's you know, it's the same thing like now, they'll come forward and it's, it's you know, they'll, they'll talk to you kind of like, and I mean, you know, it's because that's just, I don't know. I guess they just know that that's how I communicate. And so they're going to give it to me again. They're going to show me little habits. They're going to show me. I had a girl. So, uh, you know, I had, in fact, I had a, a, a girl who, um, really the whole thing she wanted was to connect with her cat that crossed over. Mm. Well, she didn't tell me that. So she booked an appointment and you know, I always like to ask for a picture. I don't need one, but I just like it. I want to, yeah. who am I talking to? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She, she sends me a picture of her just holding a cat. That's all she did. And in that instant, I saw the picture. Then I saw a flash of my friend who just lost her cat. And I says, oh my goodness, her cat's crossed over and the cat wants to talk. And I said, well, what's the cat want to say? And all the, and I'm driving in the car. And I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. So sure enough, I have the reading the next day. And I says, well, I really feel like the cat in that picture has crossed over. I feel like he was a man. I feel like, mm -hmm. you know, these are some of the things he wants to say. And she's, and I feel like, oh, he had his favorite toy and it looked like this. And I explained what it was. She's like, oh my God, and that was his favorite toy. Mm -hmm. And I says, and I feel, and so, she, and that was mm -hmm. really why she wanted to book the reading. So, you know, Eddie, you know darn well, you got to step out of your <clears throat> comfort, comfort zone. zone. Mm -hmm. You got to put yourself literally to the side and just allow the information to step forward because some of it will be crazy. Yeah. Some of it, mm -hmm. you won't know why you're saying it. You are gonna say, I am, I, I am, mm -hmm. But the more you say it, the more validation comes forward. True. And what I'll do in instances like that is I'll point blank say, I'm going to tell you up front, this is going to sound nuts. Mm -hmm. I have no idea <laughs> what it means. Yeah. Yeah. You I do, hope, yeah. it yeah. I hope yeah. you understand it. Yeah. If you don't now, you will later. Yeah. But blah, 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 yeah. blah. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, you know, when we went to the Lisa Williams school. Yeah. Where, uh, when people, we had to read each other. Mm -hmm. um, oh, God, that was nerve wracking. <laughs> it, it was. <laughs> but, you know, there's people that were reading me, and I honestly, I was like, yeah. No, no, yeah. no. I didn't understand yeah. a word. I mean, I didn't. Nothing made sense, and even later, it didn't make sense. Which, hey, doesn't mean that it won't later. Yeah, yeah. And it could, it could. Now, let's say I'm staring right at you and mm -hmm. trying to read you. Uh -huh. Could, could something be coming through for him and not you? Uh, absolutely, that can definitely happen. But yeah. it happens less frequently when the reader truly sets their intention. Yeah. So the more. Mm -hmm. Uh, the more I set my intention, mm -hmm. the more clear I make that, yeah. mm -hmm. the more I'm going to connect directly to you. But a lot of people, especially beginners, yes. oh, they, they don't even know yeah. what's happening, yeah. let alone yeah. setting an intention. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they could, they could be picking, up, picking up everything, but mm -hmm. they don't care. They just want to pick up something. Yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Let me yeah. just, and, and so there's a lot of it from from that mm -hmm. i mean when i like i said i i couldn't look at the person uh -huh. without, but I, when i looked off to the left yes that's yeah when that's i started normal. picking that's, things mm -hmm. up. that's just like when you sing you yeah. when you're performing you don't want to look directly into the person's eyes because it, it can well, make them a little off when you look too. directly in the eyes you're making a psychic connection mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you're drawn more off to the side and you're especially talking about spirit 
you are definitely making more of a mediumship connection. Oh, and you're, I, I'm okay. looking for a blank space. Yes. So that I can start seeing so the I pictures can start and the to images. See them before mm -hmm. me. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I sit with my eyes closed like Stevie Wonder when I do okay. my readings. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I'm learning, I'm training myself not to do that. Yeah. Okay. You, right. Because you want to, you know, as a teacher, I will tell you. <laughs> I love this. Love mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, you really want to break the habit of closing your eyes. You really don't need to. Yeah. You can do this with your eyes open, mm -hmm. all right? And by bringing your eyes open, it, it allows you to really connect with the client mm -hmm. even more. You know, it's not about staring at the client, but it's if I'm looking off and I go back and zoom, you will tap into the soul so much more directly, even if it's mediumship, that it will turn that reading completely upside down it will make it so much it will bring it to a whole new level wow. so trust yourself Eddie it's just about trusting yourself mm -hmm. you know so even do a 15 minute reading just try 15 minutes I'm gonna keep my eyes open mm -hmm. and just look off like you're doing and just al allow spirit to kind of show you oh let me just okay do this all right you're uh, they're, they're bringing me forward to a necklace that you're wearing mm -hmm. and there's you know what I mean yeah yeah it's so funny because I'm just now having this realization uh -huh. and that is the first real intuitive and medium I ever had the reading with Tamiko Smith hello, uh -huh. in, in Durham, North Carolina, if they're uh -huh. under snow right now. Uh, that's how she did the reading. She got the name and birthday, oh, okay. and then she sat really still and quiet. I mean, longer than I would have been comfortable with because oh, I'm too okay. busy trying to take care of the person mm -hmm. in front of me. Yeah. But she's like, it's okay if I sit here 10 minutes. Don't matter how long it takes mm -hmm. as long as I get into you. And I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. then she was like, bam, bam. But that's yeah. I, well, that was my first role model. Uh, that's what I'm that's realizing what for the right. first time. And so what I do is, and this is how you can shift and change it. When a client sits before me or on a phone call, mm -hmm. um, and even if I've already done a reading for them, I tell the client quickly about how I work. I do. So, yeah. and, and while doing that, that's when I start to channel in. Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. So by the time I get done that intro, I say, okay, this is the first thing I'm seeing about you. Mm -hmm. Bam, and you just go in. You know what I say to my friends about that is, yeah. is when we do that, we're letting them know we're ready. Yes. And we're starting to bridge yes. into the reality, mm -hmm. and it's all coming together yes. like that. Then we're like, on and popping. Yeah, it's like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and I honestly think Eddie is a better medium than he gives himself credit for. So I do want to say that on the air right now. And You're I think Christina sweet. can help with that, you know? I think. Aww. I think you just did. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I mean, that, thank good, you for that. Good. But yeah. I, yeah, I don't. Because I, a lot of times in your in your readings, a lot of stuff comes through as mediumship that you end up translating more into psychic, but you're getting it, you're channeling it at all times. So which, I think you're always a medium. Which then I'll thank you for that. Yeah. And then I'll bring it right back and ask you this. I sometimes can't tell the difference between a spirit guide, a dead person. I, okay. I, I just well, can't. Well, first I just, thing first, do you ask them? I knew you were going to say that because so I'm So you psychic. just say, hey, wait a second. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. You can, you know, until you start to feel what it feels like in your vibration, yeah. right? Because, you know, spirit guide is going to be a higher vibration than a dead person. And, this and a master guide, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's going to, it's like a, it's like a dial. And so you have to say to yourself, uh, so when someone steps forward, you can say, can you tell me who you are? Who are you, you is. A, are you a spirit guide for the person? Yes, I am. Were you living? Did they know you or are you, they someone you never met? Wow. You know I what I mean? Yes. Oh, they were. Oh, you're, you're the, the grandma. Oh, OK. And how do you help her? Oh, well, I really let her know that there's love and support around her. And I always had these gifts, too, but we never really talked about. Oh, OK. I mean, that is a dead person, but she's working as a guide. guide. You know what I mean? Or there yeah. is just guides where someone's never met them. Right? Mm. It's, and it's, they've it's never soul, incarnated. Right. It's a soul contract. It, it was made mm. on a soul level. So oh, that's so fascinating because normally those mm -hmm. people the more connected to the soul people come over around them and then yeah. sometimes the people I'm assuming are the dead people are on to over to the left by the fireplace yeah, I don't know why <laughs> they do that yeah well they do well it's because and what happens is you can really set your you know how you work see one of the things people forget to do you can dictate how you are going to work with spirit wow hey spirit this okay listen here's how we're gonna do this if you're dead you're gonna come in through my left if you're if you you are a, a guide, yeah, you're going to come to my right. Hmm. Um, you, you know, you're going to, and then when, when you're in spirit, you're going to show me a chart of where you are. We're going to make definitions of grandma is here. Mother is here. 
sibling is here, friend of sibling or cousin is out here, uh, someone younger than you. You know what I mean? Like and a you, genealogy chart. You, right. You mm -hmm. can, but however you mm -hmm. want to. So people, sometimes psychics and mediums forget that they can say, hey, this is how I'm going to work. Mm -hmm. Think about when you're at a desk. When you're at a desk, you say, you know what? I want my monitor here. I want my keyboard here. Mm -hmm. I want my calculator over here. My, my, phone is, over there. my phone <laughs> is going to be over here. And, yeah. um, you know, you can work with spirit that way. And by becoming organized and working that way, spirits gonna listen. They're gonna work with you. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they don't and, show up if they don't. No. Right. And if and and some people say, I, I love this. People say all this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I lost a connection. No, you didn't. You just stopped asking them questions. Hmm. Mm. That's a good. And you started they're, second they're still, or second guessing. Or second, people get in their head yeah. and get worried. Then well, they trip up. Well, this yeah. goes back to you know Lisa Williams, master oh, teacher. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Oh God, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, Congratulations. On yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's a lot that's of work. Awesome. Well, yeah, let's let's talk about before we yeah. before we have Eddie do the his his little segment and then we're out of here. But okay, talk talk about what it's like to work with Lisa and then what it takes to become a master master teacher. Um. You know, uh, it was, first of all, working with Lisa was really just life changing. Mm -hmm. there, there's no, I mean, literally, physically, spiritually, theoretically, every element of my, who I am and what my makeup is, is, is really been enhanced because of knowing her, of because, mm -hmm. um, but one of the things is, you, you, if you're going to have a teacher, you really have to be open. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, some people still really hold on to resistance, but right. I was open. I was like, all right, you do this. Mm -hmm. Let's just go with this. Mm -hmm. Um, and she really pushes and she, but she also really believes in you. And I think that makes a big difference. She'll believe in you before you believe in you. Mm -hmm. And just having that support around you really helps. Now she will push you, as yeah. you know, I mean, mm -hmm. she'll, you'll do oh, some. Yeah crazy scary uh, stuff oh yeah um, you your we, we call her the evil genius <laughs> oh, right. and i have to i remember when she would say that and i remember going man you just kind of that's crazy mm -hmm. and now i i have a little of it too mm -hmm. and i can you know what it is is because it's, there's there's a passion about yeah. pushing someone outside their comfort zone because you know they're going to get to that it. next exactly. step and yes. when they do you're like yes yeah. and then, so that's what it's about mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. um so that was it. Now, I, I, it was just one of those things. I, again, she was like, yep, you're going to do this. Yep, you're going to do And I just found myself doing advanced psychic, doing advanced, just flying through these classes. And I, and I just kept doing it and doing it. And uh, then she's like, Kobe, um, uh -huh. where's your master teacher application? <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I looked around because I thought maybe there was another Colby in the room. <laughs> right. And I just, what do, you, what do you mean? She's like, well, they're due by Wednesday. Mm. And that was like a Tuesday night. And it was oh. like a 14 page application. Oh. oh. Wow. And, I, and one of the things I said is, well, if she feels like I could do this, then I'm going to put it out there because she, she'll she know. If anyone knows, it's her. Mm, right. And that's pretty much how I did it. Mm -hmm. And I submitted it, and then I was in. And it's six months. It was six months. Mm. Six months. Um, and it's, it was a lot of work. I mean, you do everything from mentoring other students to grading homework to having a ton of your – and I remember – you know, you get out of your way. You say, what do I know? And I remember thinking, and that was my mm. biggest problem. Like, who am I to teach? Like, what do I know? I'm no better than anybody else. I don't know anything more than anybody else. And, but once I kind of got out of that and allowed spirit to channel through, mm -hmm. I was like, well, wait a second. They're giving me answers. Wait mm -hmm. a second. Mm -hmm. Like, well, they, they have an answer to this. So just say it. Right. And, and now I find that I'm, I'm so passionate about it. Like mm. you know, you you guys know at that class. Mm. I mean, it's I don't intense. know. It is I was intense. Exhausted. But oh my god, I slept I for should, two days. Yeah, I was exhausted. <laughs> I truly really did. I slept but for two I, days. I got up in the front of that class and I yeah. wasn't nervous. I wasn't no. worried. I just said. You know, and my approach is a little different. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it's you. I'm a little mm -hmm. more drill sergeant. I I'm tough. I'm a tough. I'm tough. I, I, I definitely, but you know, you're, yeah. you're direct. Um, that but, is definitely a but good word. There's a warmth yeah. and a fairness yeah, it's to true. it. You I try know what to I mean? be fair. Yeah. yeah. And I don't push people beyond where I believe that they could be. And that's the bottom line. And it always comes from love. It's not coming from a place of 
negativity. It's just giving them, I give them 110% of my, mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. um, and I expect it back because I'm like, let's do, you can do this. Like, just get out of here. Oh, because, and one of the things is, um, you know, people will always create excuses. If you just listen to anyone, well, what if, well, I wasn't really sure. And well, you I was- You didn't give us time oh, to do worry. that. You just kept us going with yeah. those matching those cards yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, really fast. It's like, fast. Go, it's like oh, boom, 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 boom. Like, no, too faster. Go, 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 go. Yeah. 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 But it gives you time to stop thinking. <laughs> yeah, no, I love and it. And just to go yeah. with it. Trust yourself. It was a fun yourself. exercise. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah. Just I love that pooped part. on myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I did. But, however, afterwards, I could tell a difference. And yeah. I was so intimidated by you guys in, in the best sense of the word. Meaning yeah. It's a compliment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, of course, then there's Lisa one breath away. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. then we're all in a circle. And then I got thrown in the advance. And I just wanted to oh. die. <laughs> <laughs> and then she throws an animal in my hands. And well, oh, everybody, yeah. we were doing, the the, yeah, we were doing yeah. the exercise oh, yeah, with the thing. Yeah. And then she's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You guys are advanced. Da, 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 da. Get to it. Pop, pop, pop. Uh -huh. And yeah. we're like, oh, my God. And then she slams it in your face. You're yeah. like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, it, but it, it got you past. Well, yeah. you know what? It's that's, the evil genius. It yeah. is the evil genius. And, and she has a, a little a, a pet name for herself. Um, and she calls herself Mama Bear. Yes. And then she, she will Mama call Bear. it the Mama Bear Bitch Slap. <laughs> and, uh, and that is if you are not meeting your expectations, if you're not meeting where you can be, mm -hmm. you, you may just get that Mama Bear. You really, I tell you, you maybe if you need that once, but you all you need to see it, and th that should pretty much get you there. <laughs> or see somebody um, else get it. That's what I mean. Seeing, observing yeah. is enough. Yeah. Um, but she's... <laughs> You know, I She's just, impressive. I, you oh, know, but I love amazing. her. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I true. Well, I mean, I definitely truly care about her. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we become friends and, yeah. um, I truly, truly care about her. That. And I, I just feel mm -hmm. like even as being one of the master teachers, I'm so conscious of how do I represent? I want to represent mm -hmm. well, uh, and, and still maintain who I am. And she really, she even worked through all my own stuff, which is really great. You know, cause we all have stuff like, oh, yes, I, wanna, we do. I don't want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to be who I am. And mm -hmm. but, you know, and you realize, you know what, that's, that's not what's happening. Someone's mm -hmm. not trying to change you. Someone right. is they're guiding. They, they're pushing you mm -hmm. to your greatest connection with spirit. Oh, that's good. I yeah. That was good. You need right. to write that down. Well, well, you got it on tape. on tape. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I love I love how we still reference I know, tape. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's on tape. But you also do a lot with the, the Spiritual Institute. Um, and you have a, something coming up in March 19th. Yes, yes. I'm doing a show, a demonstration there. We're going to have an evening of communication with spirit. We're going to connect to people's loved ones. Ooh. Uh, I'm, right. And I'm working with uh, Khalees. We've worked before, Khalees Simone. And uh, also, she's been a student of Lisa's. And we did a, a show quite a few months back. And we had a blast. We had we had so much fun. Mm. It's at the LWI SSD school. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is... Uh, right Fabulous. in LA mm -hmm. and uh, t people can get tickets uh, either on my website they can go to events and they'll they'll see the flyer right. and, and your they website can click is on it. your website is psychicrebel.com perfect yeah see right. I told you I was a rebel mm -hmm. <laughs> right below there oh you yeah we got it on the screen you on the so screen. good oh, perfect. oh Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. it's, a, it's, it's a constant advertisement the whole interview oh, so you'll get to, they, people can click on it you know it's it's really great um yeah i just i love it you know i was we were, we were talking because you know there's been a lot of loss in and some 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 of us uh, yeah um, mm -hmm. and my mother was just put in a nursing home you know it's so weird i will just say i was just heard your mother and that's probably a psychic connection but i just heard oh he's talking about his mother Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Um, mm -hmm. Well, this is this is actually something that I wanted to ask you because um, my mother, like I said, her health hasn't been great for a yeah. long time. Mm -hmm. um, about a month and a half ago, two months ago, she was sleeping. Yes. And my oh, yes. grandmother came yes. to her yes. and said, come with me. Yeah. Upstairs. So here's let me just tell you, I already know I got chills. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. Um, you know, and you. From my understanding and my belief system is when, especially when someone gets into a, uh, a non-conscious kind of state mm -hmm. of being, um, and, and at some point they're starting to make that transition, mm -hmm. their loved ones are coming for them. Their loved ones are going to be around. We're not alone. Like you, yeah. Listen, people, <laughs> people do not 
die alone. Right. No, All right. Never. And you can say, mm-hmm. oh, my gosh, God, you know, it's an mm-hmm. accident. They were laying there for three hours. No, they weren't. Mm-mm. They weren't. They weren't. It, it, it just doesn't. To People me. Are waiting for and them. so yeah. what happens is, you know, she clearly sees her her mother. She knows. And that's because her mother is preparing her. Hey, you know what? Let me just show you what this is like mm. and, and how, how good this is. Feels. And how this mm. is going to feel. And um, yeah, because my mom can't walk. Yes. And she actually, in, in her dream, She's showing her. she got up mm-hmm. and walked upstairs. Mm-hmm. My dad yeah. was like, you walked upstairs? And she said, yeah. yeah. She said, it wasn't a dream. She yeah. goes, it wasn't a dream. And right. It was an experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because what her mom is doing is introducing her to the experiences that she's going to have so that she releases fear. You know, because mm-hmm. again, fear is a human experience. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's going to release the fear and you know and and want to and why that's why when people have a near-death experience they they want to go to the light. and mm-hmm. it's always listen when when someone has a near-death experience and they want to go towards the light it n- i have not heard of that living person saying no you know what i'm gonna stop right here and uh, <laughs> i think i prefer to go back they don't it is the person in spirit saying stop you have to turn around. You have to go yeah, back. It's not your time. You are not ready. Well, when I had right? mine, I felt like I was at the edge of a cliff. And if I stepped over the cliff, then yes. I was going to be completely wow. over. Right. Yeah. I'll right. give you another example. Yeah. My, this is back before. Like This is why I believe in the life after death. Is okay. my grandfather. Uh-huh. Before I was born. So it was in the 60s. This is before the, the books and the movies mm-hmm. and the documentaries of all this stuff. And he was a preacher. Oh, okay. Um, and he was in a hospital. He passed away. Mm-hmm. Flatlined. And saw the light, Mm -hmm. went through the light, said he went into an open field. Mm -hmm. There was a stream. His his mother, who was already gone, was on the other side of the stream. Uh And she says, Floyd, it's not your time. Yes. You have to go back. And he said, then I heard his my grandmother yes. his wife say floyd floyd come yeah, back come, come back yes. and then he said and next thing back. he knows he woke up and back in the hospital yeah and that's actually exactly what happened to lisa oh really in her near yes absolutely same exact thing wow. it was her grandmother i believe that said to her lisa it's not your time and she's like no i want to be with you and mm. she's like no you need to go back yeah he said he didn't want to and she's like i don't want to go back to the pain and she's like mm. you need to go back so is that just for evidence that that happens when you say it's not your time then why would they be there so it must be because it's something to prepare them for the future no i feel like what okay. happens is energetically right especially when you know when we have our near-death experience except our vibration is rising to the point of crossing over mm-hmm. so we mm-hmm. get our vibration so high to get into that spirit realm mm-hmm. and it feels beautiful and it feels glorious uh-huh. and then they say no 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 and they force us to bring that vibration back mm-hmm. down to bring us back into to the physical so i don't know if it's you know, and a lot of people, though, who have had a near-death experience, mm-hmm. you know, it is done to teach a lot, yeah, you know, yep. to say, hey, you're supposed to tell people, you're That's supposed to believe, what, yeah. you're supposed to know that this happens yeah. so that you can help people in the living. Right. right. You know, it's that's your teaching sure, like job. like evidentiary kind of it's thing. It's your yeah. teaching okay. job. Yeah, so I, that's what I, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before we get out of here, again, tell us where your website is, your Facebook, your Twitter, all, all that stuff. fun stuff. Thank you so much. It's psychicrebel.com. And uh, my Twitter is at psychicrebel. And my Facebook is colby-psychicrebel. And... Um, I love you. Oh, I do. Thank you, Good guys. energy. Yeah. You, yeah, you need to come back more often. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, this has been, oh, my God. I had so much fun. You're, we could talk like, we could I, have I, drinks. I, I, I know, talk. right? I think, yeah. We should. Yeah. <laughs> medium margaritas. We should. Yeah. <laughs> medium <laughs> right, margaritas. Right, we should. Yeah, we God, go. could you imagine mediums and margarita? That'd oh. be a train wreck. Oh yeah, my God! You know, spirits, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get the spirits going. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, call it Holy Spirit. But mm-hmm. what we're gonna do before right? you leave, because mm-hmm. I know Eddie would love to have you a part of it. Eddie's gonna be doing a segment called. Oh, unlock the universe within. I almost called it the wrong segment. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> your soul is yeah. speaking. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah, we're we're gonna be cutting out here in just a second. But Eddie, go ahead and get going with. Unlock, Unlock the, the universe, universe within. within. You must have <laughs> <to> say that. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're doing our segment called Unlock the Universe Within. It's sort of sound bites for the soul. I'm Eddie Connor. I'm Tony Sweet. 
Colby Psychic Rebel. John Williams. And today we're talking about how every single thought and feeling you feel is either building a bridge to your dreams and the life you're meant to be living on this earth plane, or it's building a wall towards it. Mm -hmm. Every single thought, which we talk about a lot on the show, has a frequency to it, and the frequency is either good or bad. Mm -hmm. And we get ourselves in these little cycles where we habitually think old stories, mm -hmm. old tapes, mm -hmm. what we don't want, how we don't want to feel. And it takes some practice to get us up and out of that. Now, you were talking a little bit earlier, Colby, about the gentleman that was uh, trying to bridge his fear. Yes. And he was doing little cards every single day that he would do something where he one was like ask someone for gum yes and the next day it was like smile at everybody i meet yes because he had some real deep rooted fears yes and so he was doing something every single day to build himself uh -huh. back up into where he did want to be yes mm -hmm. and just like when we do as a former dancer and choreographer we rehearse mm -hmm. what we want to perform on stage uh -huh. and we choreograph it. We rehearse it. We recite it. That's why it's called a recital people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I would have my girls and we had a few boys in the class too. I was one of the lucky ones that had boys in the class. And I was very adamant about making sure everybody in the studio was doing it in rehearsal mm -hmm. the way they were going to do it on stage yes. yes and there's always that small group of people that's like i'm gonna be just fine on stage i'm okay i'm okay chomp chomp <laughs> chomp, chomp their gum and i'm like no ma'am put your wendy's burger down spit out your gum <laughs> and pull your shoulders back and put that hook in your chest and the ones who rehearsed it the way they were going to do it on stage nailed it yes you don't have to think when the music starts something comes to you and through you yes you don't have to be linear about it your body just starts automatically mm -hmm. doing what you rehearsed mm -hmm. what you recited the thoughts and the feelings most people think are what they don't want what if i fall down yes. what if i vomit on stage mm -hmm. what if i lock myself in the bathroom and can't get out when the music <laughs> starts <laughs> i Been saw that, that happen yeah, yeah. and it's fascinating to watch how people don't take the time to elevate their thoughts. Right. So one of the big things that people do to get stuck in what they don't want and not in building walls to what they don't, mm -hmm. building walls to what they do want mm -hmm. is they have attachments to the way they think things need to be. Mm -hmm. So if you're going into a relationship, a new relationship, a lot of people have attachments to the old story about relationships, what the new ones are supposed to feel like, and they're looking for the signs that make them feel vulnerable and insecure mm -hmm. instead of practicing and reciting the thoughts and feelings that feel like everything we're talking about today. Right. So letting go of the negative attachments, the old stories, will immediately drop the walls that are stopping you from what you do want mm -hmm. and build the bridge to what you do want instead. And what I love about today is everything we've all talked about individually or as a group not only builds the bridge from right here where we're at to the life we want and what we're supposed to be doing for our purpose, it literally just put us right in the bubble of our life purpose. So practicing the new story, the new thoughts, the new feelings, letting every single breath be something that feels like your life purpose. If you don't know what your life purpose is, you will always know how you want to feel when you get there. Yes. And breathing in the essence of that. Even before you became a world famous medium, you were holding on to the feeling of being of service. Yes, absolutely. Connect to people mm -hmm. on a heart level. Mm -hmm. Tony was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. John was doing the same thing. Before we ever became known, mm -hmm. we were holding the frequency in our thoughts and feelings. We were reciting and rehearsing over and over how wonderful it would feel to have that connection and lift people up. And that not only builds a bridge from where you are to what your life purpose is, it puts you in the heart, mind, and soul of the life purpose. You don't even need a bridge because yes. <laughs> you're already teleported right into the essence of what you want. So and unlock the universe within, you're either thinking a thought and feeling a feeling that's building a wall to block you, and that feels like negative emotion, mm. or you're building the bridge and you're jumping right into mm. your future self in your thoughts and feelings of what feels good to you, and that's putting you there yesterday without the old story.
bridging over the fear. Oh, ding, ding, yeah. ding. That's really good. Yeah. Because when you're doing the bridge of what's wanted, mm -hmm. the fear drops away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't it mm -hmm. fascinating? Yeah. And yes. it doesn't matter how insecure, how vulnerable, how much your old tape is playing. If your well, desire is a tad stronger, you're in the bubble. Mm -hmm. Well, here's one really, if I may, really yes, quick. Yes. Okay. So again, part of the podcast I heard yesterday was them talking about the fear. So he came up with this formula and I was like, it's actually really simple, but it's really amazing. Fear equals thoughts plus time. So you have a thought and the more you sit on it, it makes you afraid. It makes you mm -hmm. afraid. So he said, you take any of those away, you take time away or you take the thought away and you can eliminate fear because you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. thought, but you just go, Oh, thought, okay. If it's negative, I dismiss it. If it's mm -hmm. positive, I move forward. So I feel that. And I, and the second thing I feel like that really helps me, yeah. I go off of like, if it feels like I'd really start to listen to my gut, it, it, you know, there's a little stone I bought, do what makes you most afraid. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm afraid, I'm like, but do, do does it feel good? Yeah. And, and so I keep being drawn to, if it feels good, it feels good. I, I keep moving in that direction, like mm -hmm. a canoe down a river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I keep moving in that connection, in, in that direction. When it doesn't feel right, I, I go, you know, that doesn't feel yeah. right. And then I say to myself, am I working out of love or fear? Am I afraid? Is that, oh, I'm afraid. All right, push through it. Let's do it anyway. If I'm, if I go, no, it just doesn't feel, you know, then I allow myself to make a different choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make a new decision, mm -hmm. different choice. You yes. take a beat. Yes. You take a breath. Mm -hmm. You take a thought. You feel it out and you elevate up from there and boom, you're on the bridge to your life purpose direction. Yep, absolutely. And I think it's interesting hearing a rebel talk about fear yes. because, you know, what some would view as rebellious would be going against the grain, right? Yeah, and I, I think that's, a, you know, I definitely say the rebel has a twofold meaning. Mm -hmm. And one is I really rebelled against going into this work. Okay. That was one of the things I resisted, right? I didn't mm -hmm. want to do it. And so psychic rebel. I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't. I'm doing it, but mm, 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 <laughs> right. I love it. Yeah, and, it and sticks this, in your mind. And then the second thing is, I'm not what you expect of a psychic medium. Mm -hmm. And so in that way, I'm rebellious against that image mm -hmm. or that persona. What's yeah. considered and normal? What's considered? And well, I mean, I'm actually pretty normal. And that's, I think, the shocking thing. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's you what, see I'm, what saying? I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah it's I like yeah. I don't. I don't go. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <And> <laughs> welcome to Psychic Rebel. Yeah. Do, it, do it in an English voice. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's, you know, I just, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. That's what I always say. Awesome. I love that. I love that. I'm Eddie Connor. I'm Tony Sweet. Colby Psychic Rebel. John Williams. And that's Unlock the Universe Within with On Air with Tony Sweet's Truth Be Told. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to get out of here again. Colby, thank you so much thank for being you. with us. Oh, thank you, guys. And uh, make sure you go to uh, truthbetoldwebtv.com. You could check out up our upcoming guest for next week. We have Sean David Morton. Uh, he is well known for investigating Area 51. Oh. Uh, he will be, he's also a radio host in Vegas, I believe, and so been on Coast to Coast many times. He's going to be calling in right after his show. Uh, and also, Xavier Hayes, he is a researcher of Earth's ancient past. And so he is going to be calling in also. So we're going to have a great show planned. And we'd love to have you guys join us on uh, Twitter, uh, on Ever Tony, and on Facebook. Go just go to On Ever Tony Suite. And, uh, again, we love having you guys here. We, we will see you next week. And uh, go to uh, PsychicRebel.com to find out more about our today's guest. And if you miss this podcast, you can – Get us on iTunes, on Stitcher, and the video will be on YouTube. And so, the, And also a huge thank you to astrologer and intuitive Rachel Lang for being here yes. at the top of the show. Yes. Yeah, we love Rachel. And check her show out right here on UBN on Friday at noon. Love it. All I'm right, tune in. You better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're out of here. We love you guys. We'll bye see bye. you next week. Bye, Take care.